Elon Musk is unbanning everyone. First, Donald Trump is unbanned. He has this Twitter poll. There's this really funny news clip where a guy says, it wasn't the American people who voted. It was Russia. They, they, it, was, it was them. They got Trump reinstated. These people are starting to realize that their narrative was fiction and it was propped up by the machine. And now that regular people get to speak, hey, how about that? They don't actually like the weird world you live in. Not just Donald Trump, though. Project Veritas is back. James Lindsay is back. Marjorie Taylor Greene is back. But you know who's not back? Alex Jones. So we got to talk about all this Elon stuff because, uh, look, a lot of it's really, really good. Overwhelming net positive. But Elon Musk's refusal to reinstate Alex Jones is making him look like a hypocrite. And I know Elon understands this. So I kind of can't believe him when he says, oh, it's because I have no mercy for people who exploit children in this way for fame or whatever. Alex Jones was banned for making fun of Oliver Darcy. He wasn't banned for saying anything about kids or anything like that. So what's Elon talking about? Well, let's talk about it. The pros and the cons is a whole bunch of news to break down as it pertains to Twitter. Then, of course, we have over in Arizona, the attorney general is launching an investigation into election irregularities and the assistant AG is refusing to certify the election. I have no idea what YouTube thinks of that. YouTube? What? No idea. I don't know. How do the rules? I have no idea. So we'll talk about it anyway. So uh, before we get started, head over to TimCast.com. Become a member. If you would like to support our work, click that beautiful Join Us button. Sign up. And as a member, you will help support all of our journalists. And you'll get access to the exclusive Uncensored Members Only show. We're going to have one of those coming up for you tonight around 11 p.m. So don't forget to smash that like button. Subscribe to this channel right now and share the video. If you're watching on YouTube, take that URL. Just post it everywhere you can. Word of mouth is the is the best way to support us, and it helps us bypass the censorship because sure enough, we're already getting people messaging us saying that there are no notifications, they're having trouble finding the video, so surprise, surprise. But, uh, you know, smash that like button. Joining us today to talk about all of this and more is Darren Beatty. Great to be here. Thanks yeah. for having me. Who are you? I'm uh, the founder editor of a great news site called Revolver.News, which has just published a really um pretty bombshell piece on the next ftx scandal which i hope we'll have a chance to talk about yeah is that tether yes there's been a lot of talk about tether for a while but we'll, yes. we'll definitely get into that that sounds very Great. interesting and uh, i'll also mention uh the last episode we had you on was our biggest episode we ever did for a while until we had joe rogan and alex jones at the same time but like come on like having those two guys at the same time you know, that, that shouldn't count. Like having you as a single guest and getting, it was like 2.4 million views or something. Right. You, you have to, you have to divide it in half for. Actually, you know general. what? I can, I can tell you this. Actually, with the live viewership and the VOD stuff was put on Rumble, it actually is still the biggest. There you go. Because we had it like, we had like 300K. So I think it's like, if you were to add the YouTube views from the day plus Rumble, it would be 200K more than the AJ uh, Rogan episode. It's all how you count. That's how, it's all how you count. It's all how you count. All right. Right on, man. Thanks for joining us. And we're also hanging out with Mary Morgan. Hello, everyone. I'm sitting in Ian's seat tonight. Happy to be here. Who are you? I'm on Pop Culture Crisis. Oh, yeah. Here That's at a show. Cast. That's right. So you should go subscribe to that. That's a great show. I think so, too. You know what's another great show? <laughs> <laughs> YouTube.com forward slash we are change. Uh, anyway, uh, today I come here with one simple message. Make Orwell fiction again. It's just getting too real out there. This is, is one of the shirts. Uh, uh, this is the message on my shirt. It's one of the first shirts that we actually got out there to the general public. It's one of the first ones that kind of went viral. Uh, and uh, I'm wearing it today. If you want to wear it, you could get it on the best political shirts.com because you do. This is how you guys support me and my efforts here. So thank you so much for uh, having me. Splurge. Back once again. Hello, Luke. Hello, Mary. Good to have you guys here. Are you okay with the fact that he calls you Splurge? This is scary, uh, Mary. This is between me and Splurge here, okay? I didn't know this was the thing. Scary Mary. <laughs> I think Luke has a lot of nicknames for everybody here, so I'm cool with it. That means we're friends. He's, okay. he's Lou now. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> hey, call me Lou. That's fine. <laughs> Lou. <laughs> Lou. Okay, let's talk about news. Uh, here's, the, here's the first story. Elon Musk's Twitter, I like how they call it Elon Musk's Twitter, reinstates Rep. Marjorie Taylor Greene. So this is from the past couple of hours. Of course, Donald Trump has been, re has been reinstated. Don't know if he's going to come back. Project Veritas is back. James Lindsay is back. Who else is back? I'm seeing everybody come back. Uh, ALX. Andrew Tate is back. Andrew Tate is yeah. back. <laughs> Anybody else? 
Marjorie Taylor Greene? Don't know. Elon Musk is Solar just, gone? you You think he's he's going through a list and then just like looking at why they were banned and mm -hmm. like, okay, we'll unban them and like, who's mm -hmm. this? And like, unban them. But the graveyard of suspended accounts is just so large that there, there's no way to know who's never going to come back. Well, we're waiting for Sargon, Carl yeah. Benjamin, to be unbanned. Oh, yeah, I was I, just thinking of him. Did he get Did he get unbanned? I, I feel like I saw that today. Or people were maybe just calling for it. It blends together. Yeah, I think Michael Malice tweeted out that he should be unbanned. Mm, okay. That's why. Yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch of people. Ricketta Law, still uh, banned. Oh, still, he's still banned? Carrie really? Wedler, banned. Uh, Dr. Malone, Dr. Um, McCullough. Anti-media, Free Thought Project, so many, we could keep going. We could do a whole show just by naming all the people that have been disappeared Milo, off of the face of the internet. I know Milo said he wouldn't come back to the platform where but he so did Donald continue Trump. tweeting, but come on, how Milo, are you going to resist? Yeah. Milo has to come back. I really want him to. Yeah. What do you think, Darren? Who, who needs to come back and do you think Trump will come back? Oh, there are a lot of people that need to come back. Trump, he desperately wants to, and Elon understands that. Hence the recent the tweets news. that he sent out expressing the, uh, the temptation to which Trump is yet to give in, but he's just got to. He just finds, he needs to find the right opportunity to do so. They say there are potential legal complications. Um, given his fiduciary responsibilities to Truth Social. Exactly. So that has to be worked out. And as you know, the system will use any opportunity can get to file another case against Trump. And it looks like there are already three or four in the works. So um, it's complicated business with Trump. He wants to. And if we subscribe to the um, uh, modification of Occam's razor that Elon propounded on Twitter, namely that the most entertaining outcome is the most likely. <laughs> I think we can all expect Trump to be on there and many more colorful figures to come. Yeah. We, need to, we need to pull this meme from Elon Musk. He tweeted, <laughs> and lead us not into, into temptation. And it is the meme of the woman showing her private parts to the monk and the monk is refusing to look. The monk, of course, is Donald Trump, and the woman's derriere is Twitter. So, uh, very good. There's another one where it's Lois Griffin, all disheveled looking, looking over at a bottle of prescription pills. Wow. And uh, uh, I just got to point out, there's a woman. She blocked me, though. She, she quoted this and then wrote, this is rape culture. The, a, a billionaire oh, promoting God. rape culture on his platform. And then I was just like, men not wanting to have sex with women who want to is rape now? I guess, and then she blocked me for it. So, uh, <laughs> no, but it's actually true. The 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 rape is actually him not giving in to the temptation. <laughs> <laughs> well, if anything, she's assaulting the, him. The the rape. She's, she's you know he's just minding. He's praying, right? He's minding his own business, and then she comes along and she pulls up her dress and just like starts looking at him. You know, this guy's minding his own business. The, yeah, he, he's assaulting he, him. He, no. He's not being a simp. Maybe the, he should be praised. That's maybe respected. No, but not maybe being that's a simp what she's raped. Uh, 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 <laughs> simps sink ships. Okay, <laughs> we gotta understand. Here. This is this is this is a serious deal here. So uh, obviously, you know, you're portraying Donald Trump doing the right thing here, right? Maybe maybe that's what she meant. Maybe I misunderstood. Maybe she was saying the woman was raping the man. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and that nowadays it's a little bit and that, confusing. Uh, <laughs> Elon, Elon Musk was trying to imply that he was trying to seduce Trump. But something. but it's been nearly three days, and and Trump still has the ability to tweet, but yet hasn't done it. He can't. And, and I mean, he, he can't because of uh, financial interests with Truth Social. So yeah, we should explain it in, in kind of basic form here. Trump is having the opportunity to make a lot of money with Truth Social, rather than, of course, have a voice on Twitter. He did make a couple statements a couple months ago saying that he wouldn't return to Twitter, even if Elon Musk would buy it. Uh, will he return? I think he has to if he's running, if he's going to be running a successful presidential campaign, because there's no other way to get out in front to get your message across. But most importantly, also protect yourself against the incoming attacks and slanders and all the fake news media bullcrap, along with the DOJ indictments. There's no better way to protect yourself than in the court of public day. Uh, and, and, and that, of course, means using Twitter. Will he What's use the it? court of public day? Something I just made up right now. Uh, <laughs> court of public life. Light, opinion, what a, public opinion. Board of public opinion. <laughs> thank you. Important. Thank you. Do you sorry. think Elon should buy Truth Social then for no, way more than it's worth? No, and then no. he technically Hold still I got, wins. I got the solution. Literally, seriously. Okay. Donald Trump tweets a sentence with a link to Truth Social, which contains the paragraph. Mm. So that way, well, he's still getting his idea on Twitter. 
Right. He's maximizing his audience, but he's actually helping Truth Social grow. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best thing to do because more competition in this space is good. And if he can build a, we, if he can build another community, then we never have to worry yeah. about monopolistic censorship. From, from what I read, uh, Truth Social has a six-hour exclusivity window. Uh, and therefore, uh, Trump really? must post on. This is what I read. It could be wrong, uh, but Trump Trump must po post post on Truth Social. Then six hours later, he could post the same thing on another social media platform. Mm. And there's exceptions to the rule, like fundraising. Uh, so he can post on Twitter, according to some of the mainstream media sources out there, and their their kind of larger agreement with Truth Social. But at the end of the day, I, I mean, is he prioritizing money in his platform over this platform? And will this kind of outcome be in his benefit? I don't think it will. Are People you saying Truth Social has the uh, possibility of becoming profitable? Because I don't see that. Uh, oh, definitely. Yeah, it could be profitable. How? Who uses Selling, it? Do any of we, us at this table use it? No. no. Well, I have Just one. Asking. And I will say I don't use it. But there's a lot of engagement on it. It, it mm -hmm. is significant. Hmm. It's pro Elon's probably trying to steal back that uh, uh, engagement. Oh, the users that went over to it? Yeah, I think Elon saw this as a business opportunity. He probably was just like, look how many people they've kicked off the platform. Mm -hmm. that they're losing money because they're bad at business. I can come in, post some spicy memes. Everyone will start screaming and spitting and yelling. They'll all come back. And then we'll, we'll you know, go public again in a few years. Right. And there's been a massive influx into Twitter since Trump's count was re reinstated. A massive number. Um, so well, look, look, look at this. This tweet from Donald Trump from 2011. I feel sorry for Rosie's new partner in love whose parents are devastated at the thought of their daughter being with Rosie, a true loser. <laughs> this, this history <laughs> was wiped from existence by, by Vijaya Gada and Dorsey. Yeah. And with Elon Musk coming in, we get the whole archive it's, of Trump's It's Trump a tweets veritable back. library of Alexandra. <laughs> a cornucopia. Come, come back. There was of books of his life. tweets. There's literal <laughs> books of his tweets that were being sold on Amazon. Wow. That's so. amazing. <laughs> Yeah. I love all of Trump's old tweets telling Robert Pattinson to break up with Kristen Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking him up now because I just love him so it's much. It's amazing. See, see, here's the issue. Why don't even even this Trump isn't on Truth Social? Mm, true. No, it's not. The Truth Social posts are like paragraphs about like MAGA stuff. Well, uh, come on, Donald Trump, call somebody a horse face, right? Yeah, we need to, we need to bring back the snarky one-liners. This was hilarious, man. I can't believe it. This stuff's 11 years ago. Yeah. Trump back. was sitting there on his golden toilet just insulting people on his phone and we all thought it was funny. Yeah, was like funny. three in the morning. He's, he's Not just <laughs> insulting people, but like remember when he posted at his like taco bowl? Yeah, yeah. that's great. Like that's yeah, so amazing. wholesome. Oh, his <laughs> taco moments. bowl. Yeah. There's nothing so lighthearted on the app as when that went up. Yeah, bring back Twitter Trump, I guess. Man, all the crazy stuff on Trump's Twitter thread. We have to go back in time and look at all the archives. It's not letting me word search anything he's tweeted right now. You know, there have been glitches on, on uh, Twitter that I've noticed. No, hmm. Mostly that you'll try and load a tweet and then it'll say, um, this tweet is unavailable. Or the replies are upside down. That happens yeah, to me that too. happens upside so down. much to me mm. yep, too. Yep. So like they usually are, are below a tweet, but they're above a tweet and they're in a non non uh, That non happened before order. they above slashed the, the number of employees. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, like they appear I, no, it's happening a lot more for me. Uh, like they appear above the tweet. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, you what? Have to, you have to scroll up. 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 And yeah. then it's confusing and then it's all messed up and hey, look, discombobulated. That doesn't have any you. If no. Twitter implodes and is wiped off the face of the earth, I'll take it as a win too. Like you've yeah. got this platform that is clearly biased against anyone who opposes the establishment, namely conservatives because the Trump, you know, as Trump came in. But even anti-war people are getting banned. So mm -hmm. if Elon Musk tries yeah. to fix it, it's a good thing. If he unbans people, it's a good thing. This could be, you, you guys ever hear, hear that stuff? Is, is that Pocus Young? It's Pocus. He's yeah. a terrorist. Oh he's no, baby. Have you guys ever, ever he's, he's outside, outside the door. The door. Right right there. Have you ever heard the story, stories about how like someone on their deathbed all of a sudden will become like lucid and energized and they'll sit up and start talking and be totally normal and you'll be like, oh, they're getting healthy and then they just die. Mm -hmm. you, you guys ever hear that? Like, no? like people who are like dying and like laying on their bed will be will just one day get up and be like, I'm feeling better. I'd like to see my family. And then the family will come in. They'll all talk and laugh. And then all of a sudden the person will just go like, and like croak. Like it's the body mustering up the last bit of energy to make your final, you know, uh -huh. you know, finish your business and say your goodbyes. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe this is what's happening. Elon Musk comes in. <laughs> we're all like, yay, we feel invigorated again. Like it's 2015, 2016. And then like the replies flip over and. 
and the words start getting jumbled, the tweets mm. stop appearing, and then it's gone. But and it definitely the, doesn't feel like 2016. And then Twitter the microchip right goes inside of your head without you even noticing <laughs> it, without your consent, and then bada bing, bada boom, you're connected to the new WeChat of the United States. Without your consent. All right, let's talk about whiny celebrities. We have uh, Rolling Stone, Jack White quits Twitter, calls Elon Musk's Trump reinstatement a whole move. Trent Reznor also quit. Like, nice. who cares, dude? You guys aren't part of the conversation. You're welcome to be part of the conversation. You weren't part of the conversation, so you cried and left. So what? You weren't tweeting anyway. Yeah. He it's said, like that meme that's like the big thumbs up. Yeah, right. And then like, we're going to continue with our conversation now. Thank you. He said, this is straight up you trying to help a fascist have a platform so you can eventually get your tax breaks. Why are these people so dumb? Yeah. <laughs> Elon paid the most amount of taxes than any american citizen ever in in history yeah right. so so why like, and, and, and who is he accusing of, of being a fascist yeah who exactly like <laughs> trump yeah, the, the, trump hasn't tweeted it's been three days the world hasn't <laughs> ended like come on like people would take themselves way too seriously and they're, they're claiming that elon's forcing him to follow trump mm. yeah, that's ridiculous it's not true yeah like, That's uh, worse than like QAnon stuff. They're tweeting like, not only was Trump reinstated, but I found that I was following him and I've never followed him and I have to unfollow him. And it's like, dude, you, you followed him. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Like, we, we know you forgot. Did. Who's, yeah. who's this guy? Jack, Jack White. White. The White uh, Stripes. Uh, uh, <laughs> Seven care. Nation Army. Anything? No. no Ring a bell. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. <laughs> have you noticed that all of these chuggy people use a-hole as their number one insult? Mm -hmm. A-hole. It's yeah, really yeah. cringy. I don't know why. I don't know why that word is part so particular. And the way they curse, it just feels like a 13-year-old who hasn't cursed yeah, before does. who's like trying to get away with it. I don't know. Trent Reznor left too. And I'm just like, and? Yeah. Not very okay. relevant right now. No, I look. You will not be missed. My favorite was CBS <laughs> News uh, saying that they're going to be leaving temporarily because of security <laughs> concerns and then coming back and then still everyone saying, we don't care. We, it's like, it's okay. Especially like, if you announce it, you won't have the willpower not to come back. Yeah, and then they came back. They, they came right back just a few days afterwards, a few hours afterwards, and it's like, oh yeah, we're still looking, we're monitoring the situation. Yeah. Like, well, what? What? No, you, the thing is, none of these people can really leave, and that's why it's not the the last kind of death croak of Twitter, because nothing on the planet has been able to replicate the network effects that Twitter has. True. Yeah. I would be astonished if it's just too valuable to too many major stakeholders in the system. Just recently, you had Elon, who, by the way, I think he is maybe the first major captain of industry to mock the ADL. Since the ADL's <laughs> oh, yeah. inception. This is a first. It's yeah. a major thing. Very it's true, incredible. Yeah. And he continued it. So Israel <laughs> did a tweet. And Elon kind of mocked them too. and But but in a playful way saying, look, um, you know, we need more people to tweet. We need more countries to tweet. And so if countries are tweeting, um, you know, it's just, it's too valuable. It's It's not like there's this other thing called... What is it called? Like Triceratops? There, there's some <laughs> stupid like left wing version of Twitter that they're trying to do. Mastodon. Mastodon. You, Mastodon. you yeah. can't, you can't do that yeah. because of the network effect. No, 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 no. no. Actually, actually, we're learning that Mastodon is uh, uh, quite based. Actually, they're uh, officially telling people if you have a problem, just block them. We're not going to ban them. And they're saying, uh, I saw this woman. She said that she got suspended on Mastodon because she was calling out white people. And they were like, yeah, it's racism. <laughs> racism, you're not allowed. That, was that an actual thing or just like an algorithmic mistake? No, no, someone did it. And they said that her posting about this was like she got suspended. No, but here, here's what them. people don't realize. Mastodon, it's, it's, uh, uh, they're different servers. It's so, okay, so it's the Fediverse. Mastodon is like, I guess, one note. I'm not entirely sure how it works. I'm sure people in chat probably know better. But basically, when you sign up for it, you pick a server hosted by who knows. Mm -hmm. And so they warn you. This is some random guy's basement. You don't know what he's doing. Right. When you sign up for this to get off Twitter, he's got all your data, your password, he's got everything. Mm -hmm. right. And so people are signing up and they're thinking, this is going to be better now. And there's a mod, there's a viral tweet where he's like, yo, just block people. I'm not going to, we're not banning them. Like, just block them. Even on Twitter sure. weren't doing that. Twitter yeah. was banning everybody. Yeah. So that's yeah. not turning well, out to be based. That's, that's fair enough. But, but I think the point stands. Twitter is something, it's unique. Its function as the global public square is unique. And it has network effects that um, are also unique. 
And for that reason, um, a lot of stakeholders are going to do everything they can to prevent Elon from going the direction he seems to be going in. He has a very difficult position. He needs to exercise um, a lot of caution. He needs to approach things with finesse. And I would say so far, he's done about as well as we could reasonably expect him to do given what the stakes are and given what he's up against yeah there's a couple hiccups that he deserves to be criticized on legitimately but you do make a good point because where else could you see the president of the adl <laughs> go after elon musk and elon musk respond saying hey stop defaming me yeah. where else where else could you see kanye west say shalom right oh, yeah. this, like this this hive mind this this uh Everybody online reality is, is is amazing and the people quitting it there's a reason they're coming back. All these people, all these actors, hey, I'm quitting Twitter. Hey, uh, I'm still quitting Twitter, but I want to make one more post and another post. And this Dude. is, this is again, something very similar to what we saw with uh, Neil Young with Spotify. Oh, this yeah. is the same thing we saw with all these celebrities saying that they're going to be moving to Canada. A lot of these people are all talk. They're all yep. bark, no bite. And but, we have to understand these threats are empty and they need to be called yeah. out as ridiculous because Twitter is where it's at right now. It's fun, it's entertaining, and it's where I'm at. It's take, the take old St. Augustine, Lord made Make me chase, but not yet. Exactly. This is this is amazing. When Kanye West gets reinstated, people are starting to feel like I don't have to worry about cancel culture anymore. I don't have to walk on eggshells. So what does Kanye tweet? Shalom. Hilarious. The ADL. Uh, some some guy he tweeted. He's openly mocking us now. It's like uh huh. <laughs> so yeah. what? Like the problem is these people were were overly sensitive. I don't think Kanye West is an, is an anti semite. I think he's probably got some wacky views. I think he said some some silly things. But I think if you sat down with him and talked to him, you'd understand him, right? It's He's not like this caricature of a guy marching around with a hood and a tiki torch or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But these people want to say that uh, libs of TikTok, for instance, by simply tweeting out, I'm sorry, retweeting videos posted by people publicly, she's murdering them. So there's this viral tweet, I, I comment on it, where they're like, you know, uh, uh, libs of TikTok has murdered hundreds of LGBT people by sharing these videos. And it's like, bro, the videos are public. Right. Libs of TikTok isn't doing anything. If that's their standard and people have to abide by those kind of psychotic individuals, they're scared to speak out. Now, Elon comes in and says, have fun, guys. And what are we seeing? Spicy memes, jokes, trolling and fun. Yeah. Comedy. And you know what? Jack White. Well, he doesn't like fun. He says fun is bad. So he has to leave. Okay, right. bye bye. Go play your music, dude. I don't care. We'll we'll have we'll have fun and 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 post spicy memes. Bring back the meme wars. Yeah. Yeah, it's sad and pathetic. Um, but yeah, the whole thing about libs of TikTok killing people that they have this new term that a lot of these kind of midwit mediocrities with master's degrees are talking about. <laughs> Um, called stochastic terrorism. That's right. And uh, it's it's really such a joke concept, but it effectively means that you can't criticize anyone because of the possibility that the criticism would be out there in the ether and some crazy person might attack some kind of affiliated group, and then, of course, you're responsible. Um, so it's the latest of, of many uh, censorship predicates. That And then... Uh the, the woman behind the libs of TikTok, what's her name? Chaya? Is that her name? Mm -hmm. She puts stochastic terrorists in her bio. And now I'm seeing these leftist journalists be like, she's openly bragging about doing it. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? Do you really not understand someone being facetious, making fun of you for calling right, them that? Right. Or are you intentionally just trying to lie? You know what, man? Hey. I'm, I'm glad Elon bought Twitter. Because he, he, he took over the space, and it is nuts to see this. Like Luke mentioned, telling that the, the, so the president of the ADL is like, I can't believe Elon's doing this. When he had a meeting with us, he promised us. And then Elon says, stop defaming me. Like, that's openly mocking them. But I guess Elon Musk is the definition of FU money. Yeah, just just sure. outright. We'll see how far it goes. But so far, I think he deserves credit because there's so many people who you think you would have FU money, but they never... They never use it in that fashion. And uh, I think Elon is setting an excellent example, stepping into the actual arena, playing for keeps, and seeing where, you know, seeing where things land. Um, so give him major credit, and uh, it's only just begun. So we'll see how it unfolds. I think Elon actually tweeted at Trent Reznor, too, or tweeted about him or something. 
I don't know, Jack White posted on Instagram some long diatribe that's not worth reading. That's not free speech or what the poll decided or whatever nonsense you're claiming to be. This is straight up you trying to help a fascist have a platform so you can eventually get your tax breaks. Like, I don't think this guy knows anything about tax law. You know what I mean? No, I mean, it, it's the typical sort of like maybe 105 IQ, you know, burned out idiot kind of <laughs> if that high. pseudo clever conspiracy theory. It's always like some dumb financial incentive that doesn't even make sense if you actually know how these things work. There's a certain kind of framework for this particular type of accusation. Um, and I would peg him around 105. Well, let's do this. That's high for me. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call out <laughs> Elon Musk for hypocrisy. We have this tweet from Shuan Head. She said, Elon Musk confirms he won't reinstate Alex Jones. However you feel about Alex Jones aside, am I wrong here? Like, not that there was much, uh, there was much doubt before, but Elon just completely showed his ass. Mm. Elon said, my firstborn child died in my arms. I felt his last heartbeat. I have no mercy for anyone who would use the deaths of children for gain, politics, or fame. Now, that's interesting. Alex Jones was not banned from Twitter for anything related to any kids. Alex Jones was banned from Twitter because he insulted Oliver Darcy. Elon is insulting a reporter, a bannable offense. Okay, ban yourself. Uh, I'll wait. Is Elon Musk going to ban himself? He's going to shut up? Okay, look, I can respect all of the good things he's done, the people he's unbanned, and I will accept the win. What I will not accept is, I, I will say it this way. It is not victory for the people that we are living beneath the whims of a billionaire. What is a victory for the people is a clear set of rules, policies, and procedures so we can all fairly understand the rules of the platform. Elon, it's your platform. I understand that. What are the rules? If you come out and tell me the rule is free speech, I say, you got it, boss. If you come out and say the rule is, you can't say this, that, otherwise I'll say, okay, well, that's dumb, but you got it, boss. If you come out and tell me the rules are A, but then, oh, by the way, I have special rules for other people. Well, then your, your rules are garbage and completely meaningless. Now, what's really happening is you're unbanning people you like. Well, that's a very interesting point. But what would you say to this is that what if in practice, in terms of how things cash out, it's actually maximizes free speech on Twitter to have an arbitrary system rather than to have a system that follows prescribed rules. Because you'd have to think what kind of prescribed rules can get, he get away with. He could say what he said before, which is that the law of the land in terms of speech will govern speech policy on Twitter, which in the U.S. would mean First Amendment. I don't know if that's practical given the implications. I understand that. So let's say, let's ask where the line is. Insulting a reporter, is that a bannable offense? Is that is that is that in need of flexibility? I think they would all need flexibility, but I think it's easier to think in terms of who would be let back on versus kind of neutral principles that are kind of applied retroactively. In practice, he can get away with more if he pursues the arbitrary of course, approach. Of course, of course. In terms and, of maximizing free speech on Twitter. And and he's giving himself a legal argument here because he's outright saying that for this personal reason, he will not be reinstating Alex Jones. I will right. stress, I absolutely uh, am, uh, feel for, and sympathize with Elon over this feeling of, of losing his son. I mean, it's a horrifying thing to, to have to experience and I can, I can respect and understand that. I just don't know what it has to do with Alex Jones insulting a reporter. Now, if we're going to argue there needs to be some flexibility, sure, but some things are within the bounds of the Overton window and fine. Insulting a reporter, you don't get banned for it. Now, if you're arguing that there's harassment and what constitutes harassment, okay, now we're dealing with something more difficult. Well, I'm saying more that at this stage, at least in practice, his assessment, and he could very well be right on this, is that he can't get away with allowing Alex Jones on. And he is probably um, imprudent and I think he probably stepped over the line in attacking Jones the way he did. But the reality is probably he couldn't get Jones on. And that's the cost of doing all the other stuff that he's done. Perhaps. I, I understand that. But I'm not going to apologize for, for Elon. Oh, of course not. I, I will accept the victories. Right. And we're seeing tremendous victories. It's, it's funny. We're, it's fun. We're laughing. There's jokes. There's memes. And all Elon had to do was not address the issue outright. It's probably the safest thing for him to do is like, he's not addressed Carl Benjamin. We all want him unbanned. He's not addressed Milo. 
But he right. did specifically address Alex, right. then said he's not going to unban him because he did a thing six years prior to his Twitter ban that offends Elon. And that right there, I get it. Maybe he's going to have a legal argument in the future that I that clearly shows I will ban whoever I want for whatever reason. There's right. no rules yeah. whatsoever. And by doing so, if he does ban you, you can't sue him for breach of contract because he, he he's clearly operating on a whim. Right. I'm, I'm happy he's at least telling us where his flawed decision is coming from, because mm -hmm. it, it's an illogical decision that shows you that there's no pathway to redemption. And he's using emotional trauma in order to justify this larger banning for something that Alex Jones has already apologized for. Something that Alex Jones is being fined $1.5 billion for. Something that, of course, cost Alex Jones almost everything. But but at the end of the day here, if we're going to be punishing people for using children for their own political gain or fame, uh, my original response to this was, hey, Elon Musk, have you heard of uh, uh, Barack Obama, the guy who dropped... Uh, uh, a bomb every 20 minutes for for eight years the guy who judiciously uh, extra extra judiciously assassinated a 16 year old american citizen if we're going to be punishing people for hurting children we might as well ban the president of the united states let's not even get into big pharma we don't yeah. even have to go into hold big on, pharma. hold on there a minute joe biden out there groping and sniffing kids right now you gonna ban him that's a lot different than dropping a bomb on small no, no, children no, i get it i'm yeah. saying obama's not the president anymore so we have that argument so ban him, obviously. And Joe Biden, who's currently the president, is on camera groping and sniffing children. So how about we have a standard? Oh, that's the problem. There's no standard. Do you and think any off-platform behavior warrants a ban? Nope. Well, this is what Jack Conte of, uh, what's it, Patreon? Yeah. Uh, argued specifically. He, he created this new term, off-platform yeah. beha behavior. Off-platform off off, off, Yeah, yeah, off-platform behavior, which is absolutely ridiculous. Because, again, you're going to arbitrarily say, you did this 10 years ago or 20 years ago. I don't like that you it's did this. It's cancel culture. Ex out, it's out, cancel right. culture, but, but again... My personal preference, which I hope ultimately he'll be able to achieve, is the First Amendment standard. But he's a lot more practical than I think people realize. And the First Amendment standard, it sounds something like something very easily publicly defensible when you put it that way. But then you say, okay, First Amendment standard means all legal speech. That means that probably the most banned people on the internet, like Andrew Anglin, has to go on Twitter. I'm for that because I'm for the First Amendment standard. But as a matter of practical reality, that's a hell of a lot of incoming that Elon would have right up front. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, what, what just, kind of principles can you pick that I, would cash out better, at least in this initial stage, my than face. what he's already then, done? Then don't lie don't, to me. Don't say you believe Maybe, in free speech because, when you because don't. Because if the assumption is that uh, perhaps... He's playing a game of 4D chess, 3D Maybe chess. Maybe he has to. And then he, then he should not have addressed the issue at all. Because if your argument is he has to to play the game, that means he's virtue signaling. Right. I don't care for virtue signaling. I don't care for being lied to. And I don't care for petty. Uh, I, I don't care. I, I shouldn't say it that way. But I don't care for personalized arguments as to why certain people are below the standards. I agree. Yeah. I, if, I think he shouldn't have gone there and it said, oh, you know, use the kid thing. Um, that was unfortunate and crossed the line and, uh, um, and he clearly doesn't know anything about it. Sorry to interrupt. No, right. No, I agree. No, I, I'm totally with you there. I want the first amendment standard. I'm just trying to put myself in Elon's shoes and I'm thinking as much as we want a kind of neutral principled standard such that we can say, well, if you do this, what about this? Which is, you know, how fairness operates. Um, but in terms of the result, the kind of consequentialist, uh, view of it is that he can actually probably maximize free speech more if he does virtue signal a little bit, at least in these early stages. There was there was something infuriating uh, about Jack Dorsey and Vijaya Gade lying to your face when you were True. like, hey, why was this person banned and why wasn't this person? When you'd say something like, hey, look, here's an Antifa account advocating for instructing violence. And they go, oh, well, it's a mistake. And then they still won't take it down. When they tell you, we're working on it, there will be a path of redemption, I hear, your, I hear what you're saying, we're going to try and fix it. It's frustrating because you know they're lying to you. True. It's even worse when it's a billionaire who just says, too bad. 
Like yeah. it, it's one thing to be like, I can, I can, I can, I can hold on to that one percent hope that Jack Dorsey means it when he says we're going to find a way to get people back on the platform. We got to figure out how to do it. It's another thing when Elon Musk is like, I bought it. It's mine. Too bad. There's no rules. I yep. can do whatever I want. And if we can't trust them on this, what makes you think we can't trust them on on other issues as well? This brings a lot of doubt and speculation because he's acting on emotion rather than morals and virtues. Rather than saying, Hey, I believe in free speech. That means speech for people I despise. He says, No, I, I don't like him. But but Elon, have you heard of a, a thing called Epstein's Island? There's a former president there that used to attend it. Bill Clinton, he's also on your platform right now. If you'd care about children and, and it's, children it's being BS, hurt now, dude. you'd be going after him, but he's not. And and having this kind of made up scenario where you say he's okay, but he's not good based off your own emotional trauma is not something that gives me a lot of hope in this platform so moving forward. Do we all agree that the First Amendment should be the ultimate standard? Free speech. No. I disagree. You disagree. I, I think even disagree. I think even higher for, for for Twitter. I disagree, and on one issue, doxing. Okay. There's probably uh, the First Amendment doesn't cover criminal acts. There's there's challenges to whether or not something can be deemed uh, criminal if it's speech. So so First Amendment minus doxing. Not necessarily. So listen, uh, the first some people are free speech absolutists. They believe that words can never be criminal, no matter what you said. That means literally they think incitement to violence and instruction on how to do horrible things. Mm. And there's an interesting point there. If we argue that there is criminal speech in any capacity, we're arguing Congress can pass a statutory law criminalizing speech. That makes no sense, right? So the Supreme Court upheld, upholds basically that if you incite violence, that is not protected by the First Amendment. Now, my question is, I understand that. I understand the arguments. But how does that make sense? Congress isn't making the law. The Supreme Court just said, as we interpret what the First Amendment is supposed to mean, we've carved out an exception. Not the Founding Fathers didn't carve out an exception. Mm -hmm. So there's an interesting argument there, because if we do agree that incitement to violence is, a, is, is criminal and not free speech, what happens if Congress or the Supreme Court, what happens if the Supreme Court, for instance, rules that actually hate speech is incitement because of stochastic terrorism? Are we going to continue to allow the courts to, to decide that there are more larger and larger limits to speech? So I don't know that um, so ultimately— you're saying the First Amendment standard is not good enough because it's subject to future kind of modifications from the Supreme Court's sort of interpretive development. Because the, free, because the First Amendment could be argued to mean you can incite to violence. And so there's limits beyond. So my point is this. In the future, the Supreme Court may rule that doxing someone is not free expression. It's, a, it's, it's actually an attack against or, or something. It's a violation of someone's privacy and thus criminal. It would be interesting if Congress ruled that posting someone's private information. This, this may be a court that has a, a case that has to be adjudicated, actually. If Congress tries passing a law saying posting someone's private home details or, or, or private information, phone number, contact, etc., uh, without their permission constitutes a crime, the Supreme Court's going to have to determine whether or not that violates free speech because posting someone's address doesn't really express your political opinion or views. And that's an argument some people make about what free speech is. Anyway, I'll, I don't want to over, make it overly complicated. The First Amendment is an easy thing to say, but we really do need bullet point breakdown of what is okay and what isn't. Uh, Gab, for instance, I believe bans doxing. Okay. And that's free speech. You could walk around right. with a big old sign with someone's address on it. But on Gab, you can't do that. I agree. I don't think you should be allowed to post someone's private details. I don't think there should be permanent bans for these things, however, because, mm -hmm. and, you know, I argued this to Jack Dorsey. There are people who commit murder and they get out in 25 years. Sure. There's a guy who, who you know, posted a nasty meme and you've permanently removed his ability right. to speak there's, in the public there's square. There's no redemption in right. uh, <laughs> according to the um, theology of cancellation. I just want to point out the Clinton Global Initiative is on Twitter. You know, yeah, there, there's a lot of war criminals and monsters. <laughs> there, there's, you know, terrorist organizations that are on there openly using the platform without any kind of problems. When Twitter a couple years ago was looking at, of course, right wing talking points that they needed to censor and take down. So uh, it, it, it's crazy because this this is a very important issue and, and we can't underplay it because, yes, I mean, we got to celebrate our victories. Elon did incredible things on banning a lot of important people that were uh, punished for their political speech. But if you're going to continue the punishment based on your own kind of made up uh, standards, that, that that's something that doesn't give me hope. That's something that I think a lot of people should be skeptical of. And I think that's something that a lot of people should be criticizing him on because obviously it doesn't stand with any kind of virtue. Let's pull up this uh, this tweet here. 
Now, I'm not I'm not sure if this is confirmed. That I, I, I don't know. I'm, I, but you guys have probably seen it all over the place. This is from Stux on Mastodon. He says, what's it with people reporting every single person they don't like? Please stop with that. This is not Twitter. Please use features like mute or block if you don't like people, but stop reporting. Otherwise, I'll start banning people who keep reporting for nothing. I'm trying to keep things running with so many new people, and it's such a waste of time to hear whatever you don't like. Otherwise, go waste Elon's time, not mine. <laughs> Elon Musk tweeted, please, hall monitors, go on someone else's platform. Yeah, so it was Nate Silver who said that he thinks Mastodon is a honeypot for the hall monitor types. All of these people on Twitter who report everything and won't shut up are leaving and going to Mastodon and all Spider-Man meme pointing at each other. <laughs> and uh, we're all having a good time. It's like there's a party going on and they left. So, you know, I'll, I'll take it. Absolutely. How many employees have been slashed so far at Twitter? Are they oh, man, I think enough like a couple to thousand. 90%. the point where like they don't have as many moderators? Than no moderators. None? None I'm, left? I'm, I'm pretty sure their moderation team's gone. They've got to have some people. No, I, I, I think... Because they've, like, they've now like streamlined the process for reporting child exploitation materials, which I have been waiting for them to do for so long because it, they made it unnecessarily difficult. You had to go through on the desktop version uh, and go through a longer process to do that. So they, they streamlined that process. They have to have a good moderation team to keep up with that. And there's been... I, I've seen reports that they're... Or doing a crackdown on child exploitation. On the yeah, platform. he's he, number one priority, he said. But you can't do that without moderators. And That's true, good point. I, I mean, before the moderators were just like acting like demagogues about, you know, not. <laughs> if you were having a conversation with someone and you weren't being academic enough in your language, then you would get banned. Pretty yeah. much. Right. That's well, there's, how it is. There's also You're just at the mercy of like any random well, individual well, me, that me, comes let, across this. Let me, let me say real quick. Since the uh, uh, beginning of the election month or whatever, like October, and then we're getting into November, all of my videos pertaining to election issues have been demonetized for fake reasons. And it's it costs a lot of money. It really does. Like getting, getting you know, when you, when, when, you know, I cut down the amount of videos I do. I went from, uh, what was I doing? Like six to three. Having one, it's, 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 it's bad. It's a lot of money. Yeah. And what happens is I'll get the yellow dollar sign and then I'll, I'll request review, which takes a day. You get all the views in your day. Then you get no money. If it is confirmed, like the next day, it'll say confirmed demonetized by manual review and it will say harmful or dangerous activity. And it's me reading a poll. And being like, the polls are in, and they say this, that. And then I got to call Google, and then they're like, whoops, that was an accident. Let's fix it for you. And yeah. I'm like, who are you employing who's lying on all of They're clearly leftists. Yeah. Well, it happens to every one of my videos, but I have no one to call. So, like, you saw my stats. You saw my income. It's, it's absolutely insane what's happening on my YouTube channel. But to answer your question, there's also a lot of third-party companies, uh, usually a lot of international workers that get hired to do a lot of this moderation. Mm. Some of the moderation is done in-house, but a lot of it is done through, of course, other private companies in Africa, in Asia, where, of course, the labor there is a lot cheaper. And, we, and, and this has been documented many times, even with Project Veritas. Project Veritas even released an expose talking about how Twitter employees were paid to view at everything, including private messages, people's posts, how Twitter engineers were there to, of course, implement shadow banning. This is Project Veritas talking to Twitter engineers that were bragging about having Trump's private DM messages and were threatening to release them. So again, when we look at, at that content moderation, when we look at the destruction of speech, we have so much power by so many few individuals that absolutely use it and abuse it for the worst sinister political purposes. And if you dare to speak outside of the established narratives, you're going to get punished, you're going to get screwed over. And that's exactly what's happening to, right. to my YouTube and channel in such an extensive way. There's another dimension of demonetization that is very relevant to Elon's predicament with uh, Twitter, and that is the latest scam of brand safety, which is basically like a mafia shakedown, because in some cases they have third world imports, in some cases they just have um, just, you know, uh, uh, regular people. But um, what they do is they basically tell, tell these advertising agencies, they say, you know, your your ad, your advertisement with this site is really inappropriate. 
for your brand, I think you should reconsider. And if you don't, it would be a shame if something happened to you. And they have a whole infrastructure in place to make good on their threat. And so it really is like it's a typical mob shakedown. The basic framework hasn't changed, but they sell it as brand safety, meaning your brand is in danger if you don't do exactly what we say and stop advertising with this website that we don't like and we object to no matter how much money it's making you and no matter how much the audience actually likes the content on that website. And it happens on a large scale. That's exactly the type of shakedown that's happening on Twitter now. And I bet you that um, our good friend Jonathan Greenblatt of the ADL is hard at work making sure that uh, these potential advertisers and current advertisers are f sufficiently intimidated. But it happens on a smaller scale, too, to a wide range of sites that uh, distribute content that the regime finds objectionable and including yours including mine in a very big way I have one stalker woman who's absolutely obsessed with oh. me every time we get some kind of new uh, ad arrangement she's she has a a, a tweet thread about it it's it's oh, really pathetic they have is she a people. blue check I don't know about that I don't know no. what the, the her her cast Let's, is and I don't want sense. I don't want to give her attention so, yes. Like by saying her name, but we can talk uh, about her in the vein. I, I don't like giving, yeah. but but this woman, and I think it's the same person, went after a, a, a weather network. Like what? <laughs> yeah, no, no joke, no joke. No. I, I, what? There, there's a, 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 a there's a cable channel that does nothing but weather, <laughs> and this leftist woman started like tweeting about it, and she's well, like a lot of these amount of followers. Her her friends in media write up her stories. And then she's actually getting advertisers to pull off a weather reporting station. And it's just like, wow. the only thing on the screen is it says like weather. It's like raining in Texas. Like, but the sad thing, is how, off. the sad thing is how easily so many of these people cave because usually their liaison, their point of contact at these companies is like some 20 something woman <laughs> who is ideologically aligned. And even if not, all these unsophisticated people need to hear is the phrase conspiracy theory or, you know, Trump or something like that. And automatically is like, okay, bad danger, <laughs> you know, that's all yeah. I need to hear. So or, or even worse. this intimidation campaign, are just you really saying quick, it's I just the same? Make, just really quick, or, or even worse, an older woman without a family that is there to complain as well. Sorry. Even worse, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> are you saying that this, What could be worse? <laughs> <laughs> this intimidation campaign is the same uh, thing that happened with the YouTube adpocalypse. Is that what you're saying? That was or Wall is that Street different? Journal. Well, the because model. It seems like the they're, they're saying, that. oh, the, the brands who are advertising mid rolls on YouTube can't rely on whether the YouTube channels they're advertised next to reflect their brand values. And I always thought that was ridiculous on its face because YouTube channels, including this one, are brands, they're companies in and of themselves, and they deserve to, you know, have advertisers that yeah. align with their values, but, right? But let's not forget, at the end of the day, advertisers have a choice to not advertise with certain creators. You could go as an advertiser, and it, you could go into the Google settings and say, I don't yeah. like Alex Jones. I don't like You can Milo. choose those. You could choose right. who you advertise with and not. And as a content creator, I could say, hey, I don't want any advertisements for the U.S. military. I don't want McDonald's advertisements. I don't want these kind of politicians and these kind of ads associated with my brand. And I could do that. Just like Mastodon How is complaining right now. <laughs> yes, you can. I, I used to be able to do that. I, and I used to say, I don't want any McDonald's ads. I don't mm -hmm. want any... Um, you I, still I, do that? Um... <laughs> don't you start this? I don't, I don't know. Hold on, hold on. I, no? you, on YouTube? Uh, on Google. On Google? So, what do you yeah. mean? On your website, you mean? Uh, no, no, no. On, on Google. There was a setting. I remember doing this For a few your years. YouTube channel. I, I remember doing this oh. a few years ago saying, I don't want to advertise with, with, I don't want these advertisers on my YouTube channel. I don't know how to do that. I, I, I could show you okay. uh, at the end I of know that's the video. That's only fair, right? But, 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 but it's fair, exactly. Uh, but, but we don't hear about this. A lot of the people don't know that advertisers have a choice. Yeah. And, and if they find someone despicable or they, they don't want anyone tied in with their associate, they don't have to have it. That's they already not, have the infrastructure there. That's not why they're pulling ads. They're pulling ads because the far left marches around with bricks and conservatives sit in their lazy boys complaining. That's it. So... Until law enforcement, the, the, the solution, and that's why they wanted to fund the police, partly why, law enforcement needs to stop these people, and we need to develop some kind of system. And it's tough, I know it is. The, the easiest example is storefronts in Berkeley will put up all the leftist signs in their window because they know if someone throws a brick through their window, the cops can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. Like, your car can get stolen. Good luck. 
the cop's going to be like, well, we'll we'll write down the, the we'll write down the license plate, and then if we see it, we'll let you know. But if you've got something like a bike, your bike's gone. Yeah. If you've got something like a moped, your moped is gone. The, 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 it gets stolen, the cops show up and they say, what do you want us to do about it? So if you piss off the far left, who are psychotic, violent individuals, and they start harassing your neighbor, the cops are going to be like, what do you want us to do about it? So what do they do? They say, look, Dave Rubin is not going to march. This is the example I love given. Dave Rubin is never going to march to Twitter HQ to complain about the censorship. He's never going to march with a bunch of classical liberals carrying torches to YouTube HQ to say no more censorship. He's going to go and he's going to complain about it. And that's all he's going to do. Antifa will literally throw up with crowbars and beat the crap out of people. That terrifies them. So they say, I know who to avoid and who to cater to. So these big brands, when they hear that far leftists are attacking them, they immediately say, guys, red alert, do whatever they say, and they'll go away. That's, 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 that's it. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how Elon Musk kind of navigates this very uh, changing media advertising landscape. Because right now, just a couple of min a minutes ago, he's promising Twitter being a good video platform that's going to offer, quote, according to Elon Musk, higher compensation for creators than YouTube. Mm -hmm. So this is something that Elon Musk just tweeted a couple of moments ago, responding to Mr. Beast. How is he going to be doing that specifically with so many advertisers boycotting him? Will there be other advertisers? And also, by and large, advertisers are pulling back naturally, not because of cancel culture, but because of the way that the economy is just being absolutely screwed over right now. Just how poorly it's doing right now right now I compared to everything else i think sargon got on band i think rakeda and sargon got on band during the carl during benjamin the is back yeah yep. wow dude it's been so long yeah. wow yeah. that's amazing this is what people in the chat are saying yeah, right now, we got a super chat someone just said it i had to announce it uh carl's awesome he's a good friend he helped me actually uh get all this, this stuff rolling when uh when I started doing YouTube full time, he hit me up and asked me if I would do a guest spot on his channel. He had like 300,000 subscribers. I had like 40. And I was like, yeah, for sure, man. I made a video, ended up getting hundreds of thousands of hits. All of a sudden, I gained a whole bunch of subscribers and it helped get the ball rolling. So very grateful to Carl Benjamin. He's a good dude. He hosts Lotus Eaters podcast. Glad to see that he's he's been restored finally mm -hmm. after all these years, yeah, literally years to Twitter. Oh, man, this will be fun. Apparently, Rakita Law was like literally during the show, so... Yeah, no. Yeah. Just right now, people yeah. are saying uh, that uh, that 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 they're back. Great. This is amazing. Yeah. So uh, look, I'll, I'll, Elon, man, wins a win. I'll take it. I'm not. I'm. I'm not going to ignore the problems I see with the Alex Jones stuff. But yeah. I will stress it again. Hey, man, like this is a huge victory. So take what you can get, I suppose. And uh, and we'll and I'll roll with it. I I will say this now too. It, it, th th there's a tough question about do we give Elon the eight dollars. <laughs> I'm leaning towards yes, because I said if he freed the political prisoners, I would sign up because I want the features. It's all good stuff. And I want to see Twitter succeed. They they deleted my ad campaign. I tried advertising the Super MAGA shirt. It's where Trump's going Super Saiyan. And they said it was political. You can't do it. I said, OK. So I tried doing the rooster shirt and the ad ran for like four hours and then they took it down saying it was inappropriate. And I'm Elon, I'm trying to give you money, man. I'm like, what's going on here? Wiener jokes. It's, it's, it's a rooster. It says, stand your ground. I thought it was cool. I'm like, okay, I'll, do, I'll try this. But anyway, I think uh, the Alex Jones thing is, is unfortunate. And I think Elon's wrong. And, I, and for, for everything we described. But I'm going to take this win. And we got to see Twitter make it. So I, I think, you know, it's time to sign up. We already got Tim Cast News signed up. We'll, we'll get our other accounts. We'll get pop culture, cri pop culture crisis verified. We'll get all our business accounts verified. I think unbanning Sargon for me is kind of like, oh, wow. Yeah. Like he's a personal friend, you yeah. know, so that says a lot. Yeah. And we yeah. also we also now know exactly why Alex Jones is coming back. Like now at least Elon's clarified his reasons for not having him on the on the platform, whether they're I'm not so sure not. he doesn't have ulterior motives. Mm -hmm. And he's just saying that like he has D, this motive that's close D to his chefs, heart. You mean? Yeah, I don't what, know. Like what would be the game there? I have no idea. Like he gives up the Alex Jones pawn, but what other pawn does he get? Or Who's like what more moves? powerful than Elon Musk that can threaten him financially? Well, he, he has a very interesting conflict with Bill Gates, which I think is fascinating <laughs> to see unfold. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, Tim, you, you bring up a good question. It does kind of bring down a different kind of paradigm here. Do you, do you support him for doing all this good when he did this one thing that's bad? It, it's 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 a tough call for a lot of people, but I'm kind of leaning on like, hey, he freed a lot of political prisoners. Oh, he's you know, he's giving them a lot of voices, and, and for me, I think that's worth eight bucks. It's it's a girlfriend probably. 
Elon Musk has some mm-hmm. girlfriend on the side who's like telling him you can't you can't unban Alex Jones. That must be it. That's more likely than anything. Mm, I don't think so. Women have powerful mm-hmm. persuasion. I'm not. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to get the tweets to load on uh, over, over betas. But uh, I don't see any tweets on Sargon's account. Maybe they got... I, th- I, I think people are saying in the comment section that he's still sleeping. Oh. No, and I mean like his old tweets aren't back either. But I can it see his account. It might just be a glitch though. And it's, yeah, because it's like yeah. when, Cause whenever they unban you, it slowly comes Rick back. Rick Kata only has a couple thousand followers, but they're slowly get, getting back. A lot of people were saying that when Trump was back, pe- people weren't allowed to follow him, but but that usually was happened when people were reinstated. Right. It took a while until their, all their followers and everything kind of came back to normal. I wonder if he's, he's he, going to unban people who evaded suspension and made new accounts like over mm, and over again. It's right. It's been like five years, I think, since Sargon got banned, right? Yeah, it's been. It's like one of the first. Yeah, the and he never crazy. made another account. Mm, don't think so. Mm, well, <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a gray zone there. Yeah, we'll just uh, leave it at that. Mark. They were uh, impersonating him. Let's uh, let's jump to this next uh, tweet because my friends, we're gonna have fun. Lauren Chen tweeted: Twitter before Elon versus Twitter after Elon. The before <laughs> picture, it's all women. The after picture, it's all men. Yeah, but there's like a woman right there, and there's like a woman right there. That might be a woman right there. I'm not sure, but it looks like two. <laughs> Over here, I think there's like six guys. There's like one, two, three. Lots of soy boys. Four, five, six. Yeah. Is that six? Shout one, two, three, dude. four, five, the six. The soy is palpable. Shout, shout out that guy right there. You can the smell and taste squad. the soy. Just imagine the stench. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, I tweeted, Elon didn't fire women. He asked who wanted to work hard. LMFAO. Because he put out this email where he was like, everybody, we're all going to be working really, really hard. If you don't want to stay, then take a three-month severance and get out. Yeah. And then uh, these are the guys who stayed late with Elon. However, there was a fact check. Oh, the fact check, I guess, has been removed. The Birdwatch thing got taken down. And it said that it's not a before and after. It's just the comms team versus the engineering team, which also made me laugh because... Once again, it shows a very clear difference between males and females on the issue. Mm -hmm. The women are subject-oriented. The males are are object-oriented. But uh, the truth is, it is. This image of of all these women is from a tweet where a woman at Twitter says, I'm leaving on November 4th. I'm quitting. So it quite literally is a woman being like, it's been fun. I quit. Here's a picture of my team. And then the picture of all the guys being like, we're staying until 2 a.m. to do hard work. Yeah, my response to this tweet was uh, the women on the left better learn to code uh, <laughs> automatically. Uh, and and it, you, you do see a big, clear kind of difference. And obviously, there are different teams. And to answer your, your question, Mary, uh, specifically, the misinformation team is gone, but the moderation team is still there. So mm-hmm. there are a lot of people who have different kind of political belief systems that are aligned usually with their genders. We, we saw, uh, and, and their kind of um, relationships, we saw during these latest midterms that one of the biggest voting blocks that voted for the Democrats were women that didn't have a partner. And those were people that came out and voted more than they previously have before. So, so clearly there is a big kind of political shift and difference between these two pictures as well. And I think it's pretty clear to, to see the difference. Uh, you can't leave these chicks to their own devices, clearly. <laughs> Leads to disaster every time. Oh, man. I bet they feel aggrieved right now. Aggrieved. <laughs> I, I did a segment on this. I was talking about how um, 56% of women prefer to be in the workforce, according to Gallup. And 56%. you know what? 56%. That's actually not that many. Yeah. Exactly. And they were like an all-time high, 56%. And I'm like, you're telling me that half of women don't want to be at work? Plus the women, crazy. the women who report that they want to be in the workforce but actually don't, that's, and it's, that's it's probably, probably a, a huge yep. percentage as well. Sub, uh, socially driven, subject oriented, et cetera. There's going to be a lot of huh. women who are like, I, I is that Bogus yelling He's still again? yelling. Yeah. <laughs> I feel I think bad the cat is at the studio door yelling because we want, we, he wants <laughs> to come Should in. I let him in? No. <laughs> absolutely no? not. Why? Because the son of a gun woke me up at 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm pissed at him. And he, he is, he is, it's an AIDS he terrorist cat. That, what are you talking jerk. about? He's a, he's a cat. Cat AIDS. A t- what? Cat AIDS and taxoplasmosis is real. And Ta- I, I just don't get along with that cat. I have Toxo. We have, Bogus we have, is super nice. No, he's Everybody not. Everybody loves him. Absolutely not. We all love him. Absolutely yeah. not. Yeah. Anyway, uh, what about were these we women here. About? <laughs> oh, yeah. I was cat wondering ladies. also like. Cat ladies. Thank you. <laughs> Paxoplasmosis. A real thing. I want to know Look how many up. mothers 
uh, report wanting to stay in the workforce. Mm. It's probably an even lower number. Once they've started working. I don't know. It's funny yeah. because uh, we did a segment on this and the Young Turks did a segment mocking me saying like, you know, I, I said, I said of, of the women that probably don't want, I, I, I can't remember exactly what I said, but I said, there are probably some women somewhere who say they want to work, but don't. And I was like very vague with it. And I was mm -hmm. like, they're going to be unhappy if they don't have families. And then the Young Turks did this huge segment where they were like, Tim Pool thinks women want to be stay at home wives or whatever. And I'm like, yo, Gallup <laughs> says they do. Like as half of women do. But the reason I bring that up is because before COVID, the amount of men that were stay at home, stay at home dads, one to 5%. That's ridiculously low relative to women. Mm -hmm. So guys want to be out in the workforce. Women prefer to be at home, working at home because it's, it, it, this is the craziest thing to me. This idea that like m taking care of a house and kids isn't work. All of a sudden now it's like, do you want to be at work or stay at home? It's like, well, they're both work. You know what because I mean? Because it, it's only work if it benefits some third party conglomerate, basically. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Just a it, quick observation about this this picture now that I'm looking at it. It, it really, it represents a different dimension according to which Musk is challenging the system because there's the free speech dimension we're talking about, but also like when you really think about how major corporations are structured, it's actually borderline illegal to have a corporation that's set up to maximize efficiency and output. In California. And it's borderline illegal even at a national level in it, many It is ways. illegal in California now. It's, it's illegal, yeah. but it goes to show on one hand, you can look at the left side of the picture and say, probably useless it's maybe a you know the project it's the the project manager uh, massacre you could call it but on, but on the other hand there are so many useless people that companies are somewhat obliged to hire in order to shield themselves from a whole range of legal liabilities that have been sort of built into the nexus between the corporate economic structure and the legal structure. And so there's this weird sort of phantom utility to having all of this dead weight in a company simply as legal protection and political protection mm -hmm. from precisely these third party NGO ADL type rackets that exist to shake down your company. Yeah, it's like an artificially inflated HR department. It's exactly what it is. And a lot of people, a lot of these people don't work. We saw it from the TikTok no. videos. They're like, they do oh nothing. yeah, we're going for our morning mimosas. <laughs> and then we're going to support the, the African-American owned I, I, business, the vegan restaurant downstairs that right. caters for us. All the caterers are supposed to be there for us, but the office is empty. Wonder why? You want to pull this up? Yeah, yeah. So this is, uh, I don't want to play it too loud. A tale of two different realities. L check out this video. Two guys on the right. I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. They've, they're covered it's in an oil rig. It's an oil rig. Oil it's an oil rig. They're just going to add pipe or take pipe away as it goes down. Oh, that's down. what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what the guys do. It looks like they're really good at it. Look at that. They're it's covered nice in, in filth of some sort. Just the guys, go into my the guys lay down pod. the pipe. <laughs> yeah. Land pipe. pipe and on the left, it's a woman who's talking about going to her little booth and getting smoothies and eating her charcuterie boards Jeez. and having her wine and living a yuffie lifestyle and having her little meditation booth. The world on the left is only possible because of the world foosball. on the right. True. Yay, we have to play foosball. Oh, oh now she get her safe space. Look at that. This is my farting room. I go in there and I... <laughs> yoga mats. Oh, uh, yeah. I think it's a yoga yeah, yeah. Yo, it's so disgusting. Disgusting. Absolutely. Seeing what these companies are. And I've seen them firsthand. I've been to Google HQ. I've been I've been to their San Francisco and New York offices, their LA offices. It is absolutely insane. It is it is daycare. I can't even begin to describe it. Having having come from a, a life where I've had look at that wine dispenser, oh, like amazing. a red wine dispenser for for a plastic cup. All well, these guys. Oh, cool. They got the corn. Work, work, in the, work in the oil rig. On the roof, wow. On the roof, can chilling. Can get better? That's How? Nice. What can we do to get all these people fired from their jobs? I think Elon just did Get it. them pregnant. <laughs> no, Elon. Get them pregnant. Well, no, no, they're, <laughs> they're just going to go get abortions. <laughs> Paid which, for which, by the company. 
paid for by no. Elon Musk. Elon Musk is allowing employees to get paid abortions and yeah, it's Tesla, paying right? for their travel. So Elon That's Musk is, a, is a part of this. He's yes. Fu- he's funding it? Yes. Elon Musk is wow, funding his employees amazing. to go out of state to get abortions. That's amazing. I didn't so, know I, I, again, I mean, it's a fact corporate... Fact check on that? Yeah, go fact, oh, check. It's fact true, check it yeah. right now. Fact it, check it, it right Tesla, now. Tesla, right? Yeah, Tesla, specifically. But I, th- this is probably like going to be the same... This women's is, abilities This is probably to... also going to be the same policy in California because in California, it's probably mandated by yeah. law. Women's ability to create and sustain life definitely makes them weaker in the workforce. And mm-hmm. uh, you either have policies like that or you're going to hire women less. You is, wonder also how much, you know, what function these project managers types are really serving. There's the sort of legal shield, then there's also the morale question. You know, maybe they're just kind oh, of giving yeah. those guys on the right side of the picture something <laughs> something to look at uh, yeah. after a hard four-hour coding session. Then you, oh, you no, know, no, no, hold on, hold on. That, 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 was, that was inappropriate, Darren. Four-hour coding session? These people don't code. <laughs> and four <laughs> hours is way too much time for them. These are these are like they might break a nail. No, no, I'm talking about no, the, 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 the right team. side of the picture with all of the engineer guys. Maybe yeah. the project managers are there for morale. They're like the pinups. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah, you know that that because that, they don't have wives to come home to. And those guys on the right, they wouldn't be able to do all that hard pipe and work if it wasn't for you those see the, Twitter the, employees. The project managers go there for the smoothies, but the project managers are the smoothies for the coding. <laughs> That's so the way, true. The way I was describing it earlier is that um, <laughs> the most important role, in my opinion, is the stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home dad if, it, dad wants it, if, it, if the dad's doing it, but the person who's actually protecting and taking care of the family. Because if a guy were to go out and fight a bear with his, with his own hands and, and take it down, for, I, I, the question is, for what purpose? He's not, he's got, if he has no family, he has no one to protect, so what's the point of fighting the bear? If he's able to just take care of himself, he can eat badger, rabbit, and whatever else. He wouldn't be able to actually eat the bear. So the great conquests of the man who's going out and working hard is only for the family. And if there's no one there to actually help protect his family, then what's the point? Yeah, Raising raising the family is the most important job you could have in our society. Or who else is going to be raising them? But Uh, they, they make it disrespectful. Yeah. So like when I say something like half of women would prefer to be at home, the left gets offended by it. How dare you? We would be better served working fifty thousand dollar a year jobs for some multimillionaire in his factory. Like, okay, okay, I guess. I, I don't think so. I think you'd be better served raising kids mm. and having a family and teaching human beings to exist. But that's not what the state and central controllers want. They want a bigger right. tax base. They want a bigger base of sheep. They want people that don't get to raise their children so the indoctrination centers get to raise them. So the big social tech media platforms get to raise them. So the televisions, the boob tubes gets to raise them. And when, of course, you have children raised by the state, you have better sheep. And that's, of course, what they're also looking for, in my opinion. Better that you don't have children at all, though. You're just the last of your line of progeny. I disagree, especially with the upcoming population collapse that's going to be coming and destroying and wrecking havoc on civilization, uh, which Elon Musk also talks about as well. I'm just saying, I think the the people should have should be having children. No, I do too. I'm saying the corporations would rather you not have children at all than Mm -hmm. indoctrinate your children. Oh, yeah, less trouble for them. I think I'm going to take a class on how to build an electric motor, just because. If there is a population collapse, you know, I'll, 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 I'll stop and I'll rephrase it. Population collapse is a terrifying thing, if, if, if you think about it. The only reason I have a cell phone right now that can pull up videos and do all this crazy stuff is because there's tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people who know how to do each and every one of these little things to make it, right? Mm-hmm. There's a person who mines the, the raw materials, the rare earths, the, the metals. Mm-hmm. Who, uh, there's a company that makes the glass. Yeah, so it's not you know, like Apple makes it or Android makes it. Yeah. Then there's a company that makes the chips. There's a company that makes the cameras. It all comes together into this device. If the glass company ceases to exist, touch screens are gone. Like what do you get? Plastic screen maybe with buttons. If the rare earths are gone, well, now we got to source them from somewhere else. We can't get that. If we lose access to these specialty positions, I'll tell you, if there's a population collapse, we will lose more than people realize because it is only because of the massive population that we're able to have such highly refined and, and powerful tools. Specialties, as there's more and more, more and more people, there's finer and finer specialties. Mm-hmm. 
You go back 500 years. Actually, you go back thousands of years. It was possible to, as one, as a single person, to know everything humans knew. Mm -hmm. Just being one person, like, because there was so little knowledge. True. Now there's so much knowledge. There's no way one person could actually manufacture a cell phone by themselves, let alone a toaster. That famous TED talk where a guy mm -hmm. says, I tried to make a toaster from scratch. This is what it'll be like if population collapse happens. It'll be 100 years from now. You'll have a kid and you'll be telling a story about how we used to have small devices. They were like cards and you would touch it and you could make images appear. You could control people on the screen, on, on the screen. You could move them around. You knew where it was raining around the world. Mm -hmm. You could talk to anyone around the planet. Those kids are going to be like, that's magic. Yeah. You're going to be an old person like, I swear we had this thing. and you just, you, you Look, and there will be like relics of it. And the kids are like, how do you even use it? How does it even turn on? I'm like, well, the network's gone. The technology's gone. We lost it all. Yeah. Forget and, about and, that. And to them, they'll hear the story and then they'll tell their kids magic. Yeah. And then in 50 years, 60 years, the kids are going to be like, they used to believe in magic. So dumb. Yeah, I know. Well, Forget that, about the that, luxuries. The medical implications are also going to be very vast because there's not going to be enough young people to take care of the old people. Yeah. There's going to be so many horrible effects, especially when it comes to the larger economic system, which is yeah. going to collapse, especially with the lack of people, since, of course, economies grow with people. Right. Less people, less growth bigger collapse Dude, well, japan is a good yes, uh, test oh, yeah. for all of this because exactly. first of all japan is one of the lowest if not the lowest fertility rates all the places with the lowest fertility rates seem to be the most technologically advanced mm -hmm. um but then other than you know the west and european countries that seem to have attempted to solve this problem by importing massive amount of people from the developing world japan has decided to uh develops ro robots to mm -hmm replace them yeah. which may in the end turn out to have been a better choice we you just don't know um so i don't think so well china is also doing something very similar they have very weird robots that we can't talk about on the show that i brought up before that everyone here knows about <laughs> but but china also is is facing a huge there population are, but then there are these yeah. these boston dynamics robots yeah. they're terrifying and i've been on good authority that actually there's an ulterior motive there is that actually the Boston Dynamics robots are secretly programmed for a future in which it is a state law that everybody has to watch Alex Friedman videos. Oh, no. If you, no. <laughs> no. If, if you don't watch the Lex Friedman videos, the Boston Dynamic robots will come and I got make so sure scared that for you do. <laughs> no, you have Boston to watch at least three per month uh -uh. No. No. to be in good no. standing. What happens Don't make is me do it. the Boston Dynamic robot shows up at your house and then a screen comes out of its head. <laughs> and Lex Friedman. Have you seen that? Have and it's, seen just, it? and it's just like following. <laughs> <laughs> you're being chased as the dogs are running after you with screens on their back and you're like, no! And they pin you down and it just plays the podcast. I don't want to listen. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Lex is just talking to you quietly. <laughs> well, I don't... I, what is like you, you guys don't like Lex Friedman's show or what? I think he's fine. Yeah. I think it's fascinating. I nothing for or against, but I think it's safe to say, it's fair to say that this is the most algorithmically driven phenomenon on the mm -hmm. entire internet. Mm -hmm. I hear so many stories of saying, I went to bed watching this on YouTube and I woke up and Lex Friedman was on. Really? It's like all mm -hmm. paths lead to Friedman. And it's a very interesting thing. You you wonder sometimes how these uh, phenomena occur. Um, maybe he's just such a great charismatic interviewer that it's just manifestly obvious why he would, you know, be elevated to such a station with so many uh, interesting guests. Maybe there are other factors, but I, I definitely think um, it's you know, I really think the Boston Dynamic robots, they're, they're made to enforce <laughs> it. Maybe there's going to be a SCOTUS decision, just like the Obamacare. They can force you to buy health insurance. They can force you to watch the Fridman videos. Um, there are all sorts of possibilities in the future. I always get recommended to him all the time, and I'm like, no, I just don't right? want to. Like, all the time, nonstop. Yeah, did, yeah. They, did they fall asleep watching Lex Fridman, or do they end up on Lex Fridman? That's also a good question to, to think they, about. Well... There you go. No no disrespect, Lex. It's all good. <laughs> He's just spreading love. But it's nothing against him, but it mm -hmm. is weird. It is the most algorithmically driven thing on the entire internet. Remember that story about that, uh, that chick who lived in the van? She put up two YouTube videos and mm -hmm. then got millions of subscribers. Oh, yeah. It mm -hmm. was... Uh, 
it exposes that there is absolutely an algorithm driving everything and controlling what you what you see. Mm -hmm. And uh, my conspiracy theory is that the van life trend on YouTube was to try and convince millennials to not buy stuff. And, mm -hmm. and to live in a pod. Right. Mm -hmm. and to live to, in the pod, eat the bugs. Uh, yep, eat, eat the bugs and, and not own anything. So, because pe pe people can't own homes now. It's, right. you know, their parents are telling them, hey, you should save up money and own a home. That's not possible for the average person nowadays with the salaries that yeah. they're having, with, no with how much, uh, you know, the price of real estate has increased. That's impossible. But you could have a van <laughs> by the river, like 50 right? Day, or you day. could have some, uh, you know, cryptocurrencies. You could have some tether. Right? Uh, <laughs> right, 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 Darren. Yeah, buy Do we some have time tether, to tether? Watch some, watch some Lex. Buy some tether. You know, <laughs> get into a little geometric unity theory. There you go. There you, know, you go. Just to, Do we have time to talk about that? Uh, yeah, uh, your article because you wrote yeah, a very interesting on? article. Just about this. the short and like you know, like Tim said, there's been a lot of talk about tether for a long time. But this piece that's up on my news site Revolver News is generating a lot of buzz and crypto world and otherwise, and I'll just lay out the basic data points and people can kind of decide for themselves. Uh, it's a very weird story. It's the third largest cryptocurrency in existence. It's a stable coin, meaning that its value is not, it's not mined in the way that Bitcoin is or Ethereum, that it's, its value allegedly comes from US dollar reserves backing the tether. It's never been fully or properly audited in its entire existence, which is weird given that its whole value is based on the fact that it allegedly has these reserves. And then if you look at the cast of characters behind Tether, one of them is a washed up child Disney actor called Brock Pierce, who was involved in all sorts of things, a weird sort of underage sex scandal that he got embroiled in. He was apprehended by Interpol in Spain. There is allegedly child pornography and all this stuff involved in the apprehension. He was not arrested, weirdly. And then he turns up as the founder of this major cryptocurrency, which is a stable coin, which has never been audited, which defies the U.S. Treasury, Treasury in, in various respects, and which just happens to be the official cryptocurrency of several U.S.-backed rebel groups geopolitically, including the Rohingya rebel groups in Myanmar. And so the thesis adduced in this piece suggests that there could be an historical antecedent to the function that Tether may uh, fulfill, and that is the BCCI Bank, which is this bank set up by the, CCA, uh, the CIA uh, to facilitate all kinds of money laundering operations and so forth. Um, but the cast of characters is really remarkable here. Of course, there is a Jeffrey Epstein connection, and so I encourage everyone to go and look at it. And for crypto enthusiasts and experts, I welcome feedback to where, you know, are we uh, barking up the wrong tree or not? But so far, I've received extremely positive feedback from the crypto community in terms of Tether being a the, the, highly questionable proposition. The issue with so many cryptocurrencies, they're clearly scams. And Indeed. there's that, uh, that, that Alameda woman, Bankman Fried's girlfriend, who I think yeah. she said something like, crypto is just scams or something else like it's like she's like it's, it's all scams and right. something else or whatever and like drugs or something crypto is i think mostly scams but that's not uh to disrespect crypto itself it's that well, everything's pretty much a scam these right. days what isn't a scam yeah the but issue, in, the issue yeah. is that there are people who are using crypto to scam but there are absolutely amazing and legitimate cryptocurrencies sure, and the technology itself is incredible so yeah. we have this story from bloomberg U.S. prosecutors opened probe of FTX months before its collapse. Sweeping inquiry examined crypto exchanges with offshore reach. Manhattan prosecutors recently changed tack as FTX unraveled. So they knew about this. Yeah, how can they not? Right. This company came out of nowhere and had all the huge institutional money. Everyone was asking the question, where did they get all this money? And the corporate media in response to this said... He's the new J.P. Morgan and Chase. He's a genius. And, and no one had the receipts. No one knew what was going on here. Right. And uh, SBF was also given hundreds of thousands of dollars to the House committee members that are investigating him. I don't, I don't see this, this going anywhere except for a potential right. false flag being used here in order to bring in more regulations, bring in more control of what essentially would be a decentralized cryptocurrency, but now is going to be hyper-focused to be a central bank digital currency that, of course, is going to be a part of the Great Reset 
and build back better agenda, which they've been calling for for a very long time. And this is the way, this is the false flag that they're going to get it. I, I don't know, though. I feel like this stuff is shaking confidence in crypto. Absolutely. Well, if they want people to adopt a reserve crypto, this is not the way a to do it. A Federal Reserve cryptocurrency, a digital dollar is essentially what they want. They don't want everyone just on Bitcoin. They don't want everyone on, they don't want everyone on decentralized platforms. They want everyone on their platforms so they could say, hey, cryptocurrency was bad because it was reckless and they had scams. We have a bigger scam here, the US dollar for you, that's going to be getting the good principles from it and we're not going to be doing the bad principles even though we're, we really have all the bad Make principles. Make every transaction you ever have publicly available. Exactly. Yeah, people would not track like that trace everything automatically take money out of accounts like a social credit score system like they have in china so this is essentially the end game here and central bank digital currencies are something that's being rolled out with the new york federal reserve just a couple days ago uh, and we're seeing this with the g20 just announcing that they're going to have an international health passport that they're going to implement all over the world so when we look at you know the, the scams in our society there's a lot of them ftx is just scratching the surface to all the right. bigger scams out there and just uh, and including perhaps Tether. And just as as an addendum, uh, Alameda, the um, hedge fund uh, set up by Sam Bankman-Fried that's associated with the FTX scandal, they were the major backer of Tether. In fact, they're one of the two major uh, purchasers of Tether on their exchange. And so there are interesting connections there as well. Looks like FTX was kind of money laundering scheme to filter through the sort of Democrat machine in the Clinton overworld. And Tether may be a kind of BCCI, which is used for sort of um, CIA, Iran, the new Iran Contra type operations uh, globally. Yeah, that was an interesting uh, saga, the the BCCI scandal. Right. Um, can, can you expand on that just a little bit? Because I think that that's an important history lesson that we should kind of revisit, right. especially when it no, comes to understanding the larger kind of it, the the larger intelligence agencies and their involvement with the big banks right. and how they actually work together to screw you over. Right. the The reason these things are important is that the the government does not reinvent its own playbook very often at all, and if there's an historical antecedent that serves an important function, you can pretty much bet that it still exists in some modified version. And so the fact that the BCCI existed in the 70s and 80s, which is a bank set up by a Pakistani, allegedly, but it was probably set up by an intelligence agency, and it you know, major scam. It screwed over its uh, many of its depositors. It had a lot of shady figures, drug cartels, arms dealers, all kinds of shady folks working through it, operating through it. And then the question was, why was this manifest obvious scam allowed to function for so long, uninterrupted? Well, it's because the CIA was in on it and the primary beneficiary of it. And so that gets to the sort of crypto thing is like some scams are allowed to exist because they're of the scam of the most valuable player, so to speak. And in a kind of darkly ironic twist, that may in fact end up being the saving grace of Tether and crypto more broadly, is that there are too many major scams wrapped up into it that it's essentially too big to fail at least on a medium timeline. Yeah, me and Tim were talking about this earlier today. If there was a way to destroy cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin and decentralized currencies, what would they be doing differently than what they're doing right now? And, and I think it also provided a huge potential, and it still might in many aspects of allowing people to have a lot of freedom. Barack Obama called Bitcoin the ability of human beings to have Swiss bank accounts uh, inside of their own pockets. I think that that's a power that threatens a lot of people. And I think what we're seeing with FTX, what we're seeing with SBF is a deliberate destruction of that power. Right. But you, do you, you don't really have that power if you're operating through an exchange on an exchange, Absolutely. right? Yeah, most and exchanges so, are so also thing, honeypots as well. Exactly. So like there are two different things. There's the, I guess, and I don't mean this derisively, there's a the nerd money kind of function of Bitcoin, which is like you have your own keys, you do all these, but it's a pain in the ass and people don't really want to do it. And it's not grandma friendly. Is Exactly. But the scalable version of Bitcoin um, 
is replete with all of these scams. And again, maybe it's it's not going to fall down precisely because the scams are too valuable. In the in the in the specific case of Tether potentially being the new BCCI, it's literally the official cryptocurrency of the Rohingya rebel group in Myanmar, which is bizarre that a rebel group would have an official <laughs> cryptocurrency, but that's the case. Um, it's beloved by the Syrian, uh, the the Sunni moderates in Syria that John McCain loves so much. It's beloved by cartels, which of course the U.S. intelligence agencies don't have any relationship with. Yeah, it's not like they helped them get their start in Mexico with that secret police unit that they were training down there. They had <laughs> right. nothing to do with that. Right. Well, yeah. come on, you guys. I think it's a little over the top. That's like, a little not, out there. It's not like Barack Obama. <laughs> it's not like Obama was giving weapons to the cartels. Exactly. <laughs> it's not like we had the Iran Contra scandal that was laundering <laughs> weapons and heroin and, and cocaine into the country and, and guns and it's, weapons. It's, you know? it's funny right. because you see that meme where it's like okay so look i know the cia was doing bad stuff in the 50s the 60s the 70s the 80s the 90s the 2000s the 2010s but nothing's changed they've never been held account <laughs> yes. and never been held accountable right so like so they're definitely they <laughs> yeah, definitely right? changed they're, they're definitely <laughs> not doing that now yeah, yep that's it that's it that's new management that, yes yeah and for and and you know the way this country is going there's that there's that uh, viral video of the dude in Arizona with the dreads and he's like yelling about ballot box number three in Arizona and stuff. Oh, that's a great video. And I'm just like, I'm watching that video, and I'm thinking, the average person in this country does not like what the intelligence agencies are doing. So who are they serving but themselves? Now maybe these people have the idea like, well, they don't know what's good for them. Okay, well, dude, like that defies the core of what this country is supposed to be. It's supposed to be dangerous freedom, not peaceful slavery. Just you as an intelligence officer or whatever deciding, you know what's best for us. You don't. And clearly, all of this luxury has been bad for us. It's created a whole generation of gluttonous morons. So maybe, mm -hmm. maybe we need things to be a little bit less luxurious and people need to go out and chop some lumber to heat their homes. Maybe all of this luxury is just making weak people, which makes everything worse for everybody. And all we get is a bunch of whiny complainers and... Um, what do the Elon, Elon call them? Hall monitors. Hall monitors, yeah. I said a nation of hall monitors. Yeah. yeah, there's only so much of an economy that you can make being a hall monitor, but that's that's really it. Those guys who are working that oil rig we watched in that video a moment ago, those guys are doing hard work. Mm -hmm. The lady at Twitter, hall monitor. Vice Media, hall monitors. BuzzFeed, hall monitors. NBC News, hall monitors. That's all they do. They walk around complaining, co contributing nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got to do something about that. They're bogging us down. I want to post jokes. I know. I want to post memes. Yeah. <laughs> without being, yeah, you know, afraid of getting censored mm -hmm. or, or or express political ideas or or debate political ideas that might be a little edgy or controversial. I want to have the ability to talk through bad ideas, you know? And we 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 still, let's be honest here, we're still testing the waters with Twitter. We still don't have that fully. And that's that's a shame because that's what we had before. And then we were led astray by the centralization of it all. And now the solution's going to be more centralization, which is absolutely absurd. You mean with Elon or what? More centralization as far as what's happening with cryptocurrencies, with what's happening with uh, social media platforms being in the hands of less and less people, and uh, you know media outlets being in the control of less and less people yeah. as well. Everything's being centralized. So weird, like centralization minus censorship really was sort of the sweet spot because central centralization allowed speech at scale. So that brief period in the internet when there were centralized platforms, major platforms, but before the speech crackdown post 2016 was really kind of the sweet spot. And maybe it just can't sustain it. Maybe the regime is simply incompatible with that level of free speech at scale. Maybe no regime is compatible, but certainly ours isn't given how, um, how ridiculous and ultimately untenable it is. Um, and so when they say that, you know, Elon Musk is a national security threat, free speech is a national security threat, I think that's true in, in quite a literal sense, is that right. if people are allowed to speak freely on the whole host of things that I'm, you know, n not even able to mention now, um, that is... I don't think the regime can really survive it. Mm -hmm. And so it's an existential issue from their point of view. And that kind of illustrates the stakes uh, associated with what Elon Musk is doing. You know what You know what really grinds my gears? I hear this all the time. 
people will tweet something like, tell me one time in history when the people censoring speech were the good guys. Because it's just like World War II, the United States. Yeah. Were we the bad guys? I don't know. Like the U.S. had an office of censorship. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's mm -hmm. like people just assume outright that, there's, that there's, there's never a reason for controlling information. Of course there is, like in, in war and things like that. Mm -hmm. To your point, the intelligence agencies probably do think that you know, we're in a constant state of conflict and we need to be able to control information if we're going to win. But that can that conflicts with what this country is supposed to be. People having a right to choose. If they can't be informed, they can't choose. So this country is clearly already lost if that's the case. But I will point out in World War II with the Office of, Office of Censorship, loose lips sink ships. And uh, this was it. There were censors who would stop things from appearing in the newspapers and the radio. Censorship all over the United States. Uh, the Federal Office of Censorship because we're at war. Well, you know, there's there's a logical approach to this, specifically when it comes to saying, hey, there's all these troops moving in this direction going here. Obviously, you can't allow that kind of information during warfare because it's going to give the enemy the upper hand. And it's then not gonna, but, 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 but treason doesn't fall under free speech. No, no, no. But it's, but it's not that. It's yeah. that someone might be like, I work at a steel mill and they just, some crazy thing happened where the alarm went off today. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of thing they don't, they, 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 loose lips sink ships wasn't just about telling people where our military was. Some people didn't know that. It was about giving up information on, on what you were doing to people who shouldn't know about it. Yeah. It, they wanted everyone to shut up. It's a fine line too, because where where you know where do you draw the boundaries? Because you know in the you know in the United States we did have the Japanese internment camps, we did have the bombing of Dresden. We do have a lot of policies that we could definitely criticize the United States for, which we should have criticized, which criticism could have prevented, but that didn't happen because of that censorship effort as well. So again, where do you, where is that fine line? I think that's impossible. I don't know, Darren. Do you have an answer? Well, I think um, I think censorship and information control are necessary to any type of regime. I think the important issue is if the noble lie is necessary in in some degree, as you know the, the famous thing from the Republic. Uh, the problem is that we become a the ignoble lie, and it's less that. Oh, we want a total, you know, free for all, free speech. Is that fundamentally what America has come to represent? What I call the globalist American empire, is really, um, you know, the wokeness uh, or whatever you want to call it. Really, is basically the um, de facto official religion, the de facto official ideology of the United States. And once it seeped that deeply into the marrow of the body politic, then Anything that's set up to sustain the security of it ultimately just reinforces that ideology. That's the problem that we're in. Um, and that's not per se a problem of censorship as such. It's a problem of what the regime has become in its most fundamental sense. It is a non-theistic religion. It's crazy. Sure. I mean, it's becoming more and more clear every day. Peter Bogosian was talking about it years ago. Now we can see, we can see it clearer than ever. Yeah. All right, we're going to go to Super Chats. If you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button? Subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends, become a member at TimCast.com. We're going to have a members only show coming up around 11 p.m. And I think we're going to talk about some fashion company with handbags or something. Is that what it was? Yeah, it was Balenciaga. There you go. Balenciaga. Controversial topic. Controversial topic, to say, to say the, the least. least. And uh, you can also do one more thing. Follow Sargon of Akkad on Twitter because he's back after like mm -hmm. five years. And um, it's Sargon underscore of underscore Akkad, A-K-K-A-D. Or just go to my Twitter at TimCast and I tweeted out that he's back and you can follow him there. He's probably sleeping because he's in the UK, but I'm really excited. Sargon's Jordan so based. He red-pilled me like when I was so a little go. youngin, like 14, <laughs> 15 years old. Jordan Peterson tweeted... So, you know, something like, surprised to see you here, Sargon. So we're all excited that Carl Benjamin's back on Twitter. So uh, give him a follow. All right, let's see what we got. Kay says, please get the critical drinker on both TimCast IRL as well as Pop Culture Crisis. Okay. He's the best movie critic and fighting the message from the woke entertainment corporations. Yeah, you're fine. Sounds good. Oh, this is funny. This Sargon got unbanned right before uh, the show yeah. started. Neo Unrealist says Sargon Avocado is unbanned from Twitter right before the show started. Yeah, it was like 30 minutes before. Man. Yeah. A lot of people were tweeting about him and a lot of other people as well. I mean, for him, it's been it's been five years. It's yeah. like watching, you know, the corpse come out of the ground. Like, <laughs> when you're like, he's back. Yeah. He's going to dust <laughs> off the phone. <laughs> yeah, right. Yep. I mean, he's been doing his thing, but 
it'll it'll be cool to see him back in the conversation. Yeah, I just I just watched a part of his Lotus Eaters pro- program. He did a thing about millennials and Gen Z stuff, and it was like the old Sargon where he was just talking to and sitting yeah. down and chatting, which was cool to see. So it's funny he's back right now. It's great. Oh yeah, all of our super chats are Sargon unbanned. Sargon <laughs> yeah, unbanned. That. Wow. William Nichols says your shadow band. I recorded it for proof. That's right. This show is, yeah. and it is insane that despite the fact that we are shadow banned, uh, you guys still watch, and it's it's it's, it's weird. I mean, we're in a weird place. This show should be trending every night based on how many views we get. Yeah. Never does. And uh, maybe maybe not every single show. Maybe I'm being a little hyperbolic, but uh, never Most. does. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Mind of Mad Man says no notification, and I believe in Clank and Beanie supremacy. <laughs> well, all right. No notification. How about that? Shout out Clankers. Yep. Rob says, Tim and Co., I'm setting up a Ligma Johnson candle e-store. Thank you for the inspiration. Another thing you've inspired me to do, and I look forward to your order. You know what you're thinking of doing is, uh, I I tweeted out a piece of land in West Virginia. It's like 180 acres. And I was like, this could be the Ligma Johnson woodland preservation. We could actually, like, allocate plots of ownership, you know, and you get a little card. Fake Ligma Johnson lords. Yeah. It's interesting because like the price per square foot is actually not that expensive. And then you could, you're not really a lord. We wouldn't do that, but you'd have like, you know, we could create a public park and then it would be owned by the people who own the square footage. And that could be a lot of people. You're an official Ligma. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And you get, you get, you you can be, uh, uh, I don't know. What what kind of title do we give? Can't you still buy stars? Ligma Richard? You could name a couple of stars, Ligma Johnson. who, Who has the right to the stars? That's a good point, though. You could You'll name find stars. out eventually. I don't know. What if we just like all of these programs, like go to a star buying company and then <laughs> just buy as many stars as possible and name them all Ligma Johnson? And they'll start giving them numbers like Ligma Johnson, no, 9C31. Ligma Dixon. Ligma <laughs> Richards. <laughs> Other ones will be Sugma. Uh, what else? Sugma. Sugma. Uh, <laughs> Sugma. I can't think of other ones. Tugma? Leave it in the chat, y'all. Yeah, it's yeah. Right. <laughs> I know they know. They are, and they they definitely have good uh Okay, thanks, answers. guys. All right, DD Megadoodoo says, hey, Tim and crew, I would like to know if Luke's Luclear Bazongas implants are still up for grabs. I, I what if task- them popped? <laughs> yeah. I'm asking you and wondering if she followed through. Yeah, I walk in, and it's on the floor, and it's leaking <laughs> all over the place. Uh, you know i did mention it just for the record but i i didn't actually ask because they're damaged right, you wanted goods now. you wanted them first he wanted so them Not we me. are uh, you're asking about them. we are going to uh be giving out those as well as the posters from Milo i mentioned we're we're, we're 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 bogged up because of the holiday so a lot of people are already heading out getting ready for thanksgiving some people have to travel i'm not even sure if we're going to be able to do our wednesday show because everyone's traveling to Thanksgiving dinner. Nobody wants to drive on Thanksgiving morning. So we'll just have to figure it out. But that also means that like no one's going to be here. So this is just one of those weeks where very little ends up happening. You got to get the chicken in here. I'm not bringing a chicken in. Everyone keeps trying to get me to bring the chicken in here. And I'm like, just take a dump on the floor. Look, I love (laughs) the chickens. Clearly Roberto Jr. Is a man's man. You know, he's tough. But he will take a dump on the floor. And I, I mean, how, you, how are you going to get that out of the carpet? You get a, get a steam cleaner in here and, you know. It's fine. It's worth it. <laughs> Mary, will you, will you be here? Uh, I say for, do the show. I need something to watch. Wait, for Wednesday up. or for yeah. episode 666? Wednesday. Uh, Which would be episode 666. No, no, no. If there is no, a Wednesday. If, if we do the show on Wednesday, know. Monday will be 666. If mm-hmm. we don't, then Tuesday will Got be 666. It. I think you yeah. should leave Monday for 666. Why Monday? Why? It's better than doing it. You just don't want to work. See, women don't want to work. No, no, no. She's saying we should do the Wednesday show, but the issue is I don't know if we have anybody here. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, it's, I mean, I don't like taking shows off, but there's all like Ian and Luke are going to be gone. Yeah. And so, you know. You could just have you monologue like the old days. We can just turn the camera on and eat turkey and you can watch us eat turkey. Yeah. You know? we'll like, We're eating turkey. Bring, on, bring on a member of the members area. Well, I mean, I think, yeah, Mary, you're here. Yeah. Yeah. So mm-hmm. Hannah Montana, she's also here. Hannah Montana. We, got, we can grab a couple of people. We'll yeah. figure something out. What? But if we don't do the show, that means Tuesday is 666 and we have an awesome guest on Tuesday, which I'm yeah. excited about having for 666. That'd be worth it. I think save it. But that means like, uh, I don't like doing, not working for three days is going to make me lose my mind. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm going to be sitting there on Wednesday, like that. shaking, like, what's happening? <laughs> need to talk about stuff. <laughs> and I'll start, I'll start talking to the cat. I'll be like, Bucko, let me explain to you what's you going on. You already do that. You can have him. No, no, like I'll start <laughs> monologuing to him. Like I need to tell someone, I'll look into his eyes and then he'll 
travel into the, into hell and then all the demons will be watching. <laughs> all right, let's read some more. All right, Bobby says, Elon's remarks on Alex Jones are inexcusable. Let's stop acting like Elon fanboys. You know, wow. th- th- there, there's the question there, right? Take the win. I yeah. agree with you on Alex Jones. I, I think it's it's BS. I, and, and, and Darren said the same thing. He should not have gone there. He should not have said it. What are you going to do? Are we going to be like, well, let's forego the entire victory we have on all of these things. Sargon being back on Twitter of all people, you know? No, nah, I'll take the win. I'll take the win. I will let Elon know I, I find his statements incorrect, uh, morally uh, wrong and objectionable. And then what are you going to do? You know, we're better off. I mean, he's accusing Alex Jones of weaponizing the death and trauma of children and their families, yet he himself is using his own trauma of the death of his child as as a bludgeon. Well, I guess, you know, I understand what he's saying, right? He's like, Alex Jones exploited this. He suffered it. You know what I mean? Mm. And uh-huh. but, but either way, it's just, it's, a, it's an emotional thing. I just don't agree. Raymond G. Stanley Jr. says, me, tell me you're from the city without telling me you're from the city. Tim, a man can kill a bear by jamming his arm down a bear's throat. I didn't mean that literally, Raymond. I was joking. I made a point early where I was like, if a guy's going to go fight a bear and kill him with his own hands by like punching him in the throat and holding his arm, causing the bear to choke and then killing it. I didn't literally mean someone would do that. My point was that a, a man is not going to defeat a bear with his bare hands. No. Like there are some stories about that happening, but it's never like a grizzly or anything. No, it's always a black bear. I'm talking about the point I was trying to make is the grand story of the man of David versus Goliath is pointless if there's no family. Like a dude does not need to kill the 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 emperor stag of the forest that weighs hundreds of you know thousands of pounds or whatever because what is he going to do with it? He's going to be like, well, it's dead. No, like the the conquest is always in support or saving of someone else. So that's but he my might point. he might be revitalized to code for another few hours if there's an attractive woman working in the HR department. That's all. I think that's true, actually. Like, I, how much I'd be willing to bet that that if you I think this is fairly obvious, okay? That if you take two guys and ask them to, you know, work out and we're going to track how many reps they can do until they have to stop. I bet if you took two guys and put them in a gym and said, do as many lifts as you can until your arms are too sore to move. If you then brought a woman in, a very attractive one, they'd probably start lifting again. They'd like, mm-hmm. they'd find that, but for real though. A second mm-hmm. wind. And it's, and it's not a statement on like magic or anything. It's a statement on just what human beings are. The guy's going to be like, oh, I'm going to do it. You know, like give him a reason. Give him a, a physical reason. More importantly, I've read those stories about women who have lifted cars off of their kids. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we know that humans do things for other humans. Mm-hmm. This is the way it is. That's cool, actually. Reading the story, like a kid got hit by a car and the, and the mom, she's like 5'5". Five, five. She like lifts the car up, and like yeah, tears she, her muscles, but she doesn't care. She's like, I will save you. Yeah, she like compressed lip, like vertebrae in her back, right? It was wow, a crazy dude, that's story cool. like that. Yeah. I, I, I remember watching a story about a guy who got crushed by a boulder and then he lifted the boulder off of him. Dude, and it was like, it was like 700, I don't, I don't know how heavy it was, but doing so tore his muscles. He like put so much strain into doing it. Okay. And they were saying like, your muscles actually have five times more lifting capacity, but they destroy themselves in doing it. Mm. So that's why they're like limited. Mm. So, you know, we're actually pretty strong. Humans. Stronger than we know. Everybody was super chatting. Carl is back on, on Twitter. I'm glad we didn't notice because we made a lot of money off people trying to tell us. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you for the super chats. I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm, I'm stoked to see Carl on, man. I'm, I'm really excited for that. It's, it's great. He's, he's, he's amazing. Lotus Eaters podcast is fantastic. Yeah, it is. Biko says, is Tim Cast interested in hiring pop culture writers? If so, what would be the best way to apply? I don't know, and I don't know. I guess Mary's in charge of that. Yeah, I'm in charge. You should <laughs> DM me on Twitter. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you know, she's on Pop Culture Crisis. That's their, that's their pur- purview. All right. AK Storm says, Tim, please ask Mary about the BDSM teddy bears marketed to children she covered on Pop Culture Crisis today. Truly disturbing. We'll That's talk about the that. After show, yeah, we'll talk about the after show. Go off. Yeah, we'll make it. We'll we'll get we'll get right into it. That'll be really really good. All right, Pinochet's helicopter tour says, "Well, Tim, Google really didn't like your four o'clock video, and I can confirm it. I saw that, and I was like, oh, what does that mean? Well, the good news is, the video I put up at four p.m. is that the Arizona Assistant AG is refusing to certify the election. This is true. It's just, it's in the news. It's happening." Mm-hmm. It is, uh, it's doing really well. People are able to get it, but it is demonetized. So uh, there you go. 
Hmm. Which means I'll make probably, I don't know, 20 bucks off of uh, <laughs> that, that video for the day. So, you know, it is what it is. I'll take 20 bucks, you know what I mean? But that's, that's, that's like erasing the revenue off of it, you know? You're making 20 bucks? <laughs> I, I want 20 bucks. <laughs> I'm not even getting that. This is why we shifted focus to doing uh, TimCast memberships for the company. Mm -hmm. Because you've got activists trying to take your ads away. And because YouTube's trying to take your ads away. So I also, this is, this is, this is a thing too. I've picked up, uh, we start, I started doing established titles, to sponsorship on the TimCast channel. I normally don't do ad reads on because they're demonetizing everything. So I'm like, okay, let's play that game. Demonetize, shadow ban, whatever. People who want to watch my content are going to watch it. I'm, I'll, I'll sell my own ad if you're not going to run ads against it. And so that makes up the difference. So we're, we, we, will, we will always find a way. We're not going to let censorship get us down. The one free man says, odd how all tech platforms laying off thousands of people in unison. Elon said Twitter was hemorrhaging $4 million a day. What was keeping them afloat until Elon bu burst the bubble? Was someone subsidizing them in exchange for censorship? No, it's that a bunch of advertisers pulled off the platform when Elon moved in because they're biased lunatics. Mm -hmm. And so then they start losing money. However, I do think something interesting is happening in, in, in terms of all these layoffs because we're seeing a bunch of ad buyers say that there's like they're, they're cutting down on sponsorships and marketing firms are saying there's less money to go around. So the reporting that I heard is that next year there's going to be a major eco economic downturn. Uh, where'd you hear that? I just scuttlebutt on Twitter. Yeah. Con you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I saw that really funny uh, uh, Twitter account. It was uh, Inverse Kramer. You ever see that one? Oh, yeah. I have seen Whatever that. Jim Cramer says, do the opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they show everything mm -hmm. he was wrong about. Mm -hmm. And they're like, if you do the opposite of what he says, you get rich. Yeah. It's like uh, uh, inverse Cramer is like George Costanza when he decided to do everything opposite. Phoenix Ammunition says, we've sent several appeals to Twitter to be reinstated and so far nothing. We never actually broke a rule in the first place. Elon, please help. Y'all guys should tweet about Phoenix Ammunition because they were unjustly banned from Twitter. Were they? Yeah. They're, they're cool guys. Yeah. yeah they do good stuff. Yeah. They're the ones who did the website where when you wanted to buy ammo, it asked you if you voted for Joe Biden. And if you put yes, it kicks you out of the website. I think it sent you to like... Um, <laughs> His gun control page or something. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. He's like, we don't need your money. That's a Phoenix with an F-E-N-I-X. Yeah, F-E-N-I-X. Good guys. Fire Burns, people says, went to start watching Timcast IRL tonight and was not in my subscription tab or on the channel page found... Found it on my homepage under the live tab. Isn't that something? Uh, Isn't that something, huh? That was that the, the same thing happened to me. I was going on my phone to the channel and I couldn't find show. it. Yeah. Yep. Same time. It, it happens, happens a lot. Time. Yeah. Man, I, I got to tell you, if you guys didn't like watching the show, like it, we would have been annihilated by YouTube censorship a long time ago. Yeah. There, if 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 we were if we were like Lex Friedman as as Darren described it. We're the, we're the inverse of Lex Friedman. <laughs> like the way he describes it is people are just stumbling. Maybe that's what YouTube's doing. They're like, get everybody to watch. Everybody who watches Timcast IRL, go watch Lex Friedman instead. So we're getting <laughs> punished in the algorithm, but people are like, YouTube, stop. I want to watch this show. And then meanwhile, people are waking up and they're watching Lex. Well, that's... I don't know if that's actually true. I got no beef with Lex. not just speculation. No, it's nothing against Lex, but there, there were conversations that, uh, that our friend Susan uh, of, of YouTube... Um, was having and basically people were criticizing her for not doing a full-on ban of Ben Shapiro and right. her defense of that was saying that we've run a lot of studies on it and they've shown that Ben Shapiro is actually a very effective stopping point that is to say he serves a very important de-radicalization function and for that reason, I think, um, you know, there's a real utility to the Susan Wozniak or whatever, Wojcicki. Wojcicki, 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 <laughs> Wojcicki, <laughs> Susan. But uh, there's a real utility to the, uh, to the censors say that, look, these people are an off-ramp. They're de-radicalizers. They'll go and they'll watch Lex Fridman. And in many cases, and again, nothing against these people personally, but there is a kind of fool's trade whereby a certain type of talking head will earn your tra trust by saying controversial things like boys have penises and girls have vaginas and in exchange for that trust 
will shove down orthodoxies on everything else down your throat. And that is a very important de-radicalization effort, and there's a whole cluster of people who may fit that description. And I think it's fair to say that um, the Lex phenomenon may be adjacent to to all of that. Yeah. Or Ben Shapiro, you know, telling yeah. people to take medical procedures. Um, also, right. Ben Shapiro gets a lot of his traffic from Facebook. Overwhelmingly, a well, lot. He has a, That's the Daily Wire. I've, yeah. I've heard... Well, if you look at the number one shared kind of articles on Facebook, yeah. it's usually Daily Wire. It's no, usually it's, ben again, Daily Daily Wire is the Lex Fridman of Facebook. <laughs> and mm. and it's not accidental. I, I, I've heard, I'm not going to say for a fact, but I've heard on good authority, Shapiro has a great relationship with Zuckerberg, and they've had the great relationship for a long time. And again, it's there's a utility to having Ben Shapiro, who's very reliable on the key things, being basically as right wing as you can be and not punished by the algorithms. Right. There's a utility to that in terms of how the larger conversation is controlled. Well, speaking of that, we've got Chris Toast, who says show is hidden from my feed on both Android and desktop. Oh, that's amazing. Then we have uh, what is this right here? Sergeant Wolf says, hey, Tim and crew, I'd fig I figured I'd chat and let you know that the show was not in my feed, not on my home screen or subscribed uploaded feed. Had to go to the channel and find it there. Yeah. Really interesting. It's, it, we're getting more messages than normal. So yeah. share the URL on every single platform. Twitter. How about that? Post it to Twitter where you're allowed to have, make jokes again. And uh, hopefully, the, the, the hope I have is that if enough people who watch this video share the URL every time it goes live... No amount of censorship will stop a natural phenomenon of people saying, check this show out. Because clearly they're trying to stop us. You know, part of me is like, oh, you know what? If we finally get banned, I can go take my van down by the river and just go fishing. Not have to worry about it. But, you know, for the time being, we're here to fight the culture war and it looks like we're winning. So they're gonna, they're, there's going to be the death rattle. There's going to be the, 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 the panic attacks. YouTube's going to lose its mind. They're not happy about it. The reason why say Elon Musk buys Twitter. The reason why these changes are happening is because we have not stopped pushing back and demanding free speech, calling out the lies in the machine, and they wish we would just roll over. So it's a, a little thing we can do. But I say the same thing of Steven Crowder. You know, they, 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 they keep giving him strikes on YouTube, watch his show on Rumble, watch Lotus Eaters, watch The Quartering, and then just share all the content. It's the most powerful thing you can do. They can't censor it if everyone just keeps sharing. It's like whack-a-mole. They can't do anything about it. I think that's one of the reasons I still exist, <laughs> you know, dealing with all the uh, crap. I think it's viral marketing. We don't even right. do any regular marketing. It's you guys sharing the, the videos. Yeah, they, they, YouTube's not re recommending us. Yeah. YouTube recommends our videos to only people who are already in that bubble. Mm -hmm. People still tell me they get unsubscribed from the channel when they never unsubscribed. So... Again, lots of crazy things wow. happening here. The ass says, hey, Lucas, I bought a shirt from your website, never got a return email. I messaged you via Instagram, so help me out. Also love the work that y'all do. Yeah, you should be able to message the company that you bought it from, and they'll send you a tracking number. You should, if you have any problems, also if you have any, sometimes, you know, rarely this happens. I get a message, someone saying that the graphics weren't that well. You could get a new t-shirt right away after emailing the company that, of course, did all the processing. So if you have any problems with quality or shipping, reach out to uh, either Teespring or another company we work with, and they use usually solve all your problems right away. Ian Kenny says, Kanye was hanging out with Milo Yiannopoulos, said he's running for president in 2024, and Milo will be his campaign manager. Yo. I saw that. Is that true? I saw the video. <laughs> There's an actual yeah, video of a random guy filming outside, and Kanye's like, yay. He's like, hey, come in inside. And he's like, oh, it's, it's, he's, Milo's there, and, and that's what Kanye said. He's running. What Ye said. Yeah, uh, yay 2024. <laughs> all right. Okay, let's see. What is this one? Uh, Tact Tacti Platy says, Tim, Mary is a far better co-host than Ian for this show as well. Not cringe half the time and doesn't say upsetting things. Please <laughs> have her on more. Things. What does Ian say that upsets you so much? Hey, Mary is great, but so is Ian. 
Ian, I think, adds another component to the show that, that mm-hmm. is very rare and is awesome and I think is needed. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, pissing I, people off, upsetting them. Well, I think he's he needs... To, people need to do that. People, <laughs> yeah. like, it, it no, shouldn't I be... It. it shouldn't be a circle, you know what? A circle of... Of jerks, uh, of, of yeah, patting yeah. each other on the back. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're we're not here for that. We're here to we're we want to hear uh, you know opinions that are not ours. And Ian provides that, and he I allows us to have conversations. With you more if that's what you want. Yeah, sure. No, it's, it's but, good. But, no, Look, but he's being real. He's being you know. I, I believe he's being genuine. Mm-hmm. There's, there's 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 several instances where Ian has brought up very bad points, and also where he's brought up very good points. Mm-hmm. When we were talking about the lockdowns and stuff, and why we didn't think the government should be able to lock things down, he said, "What about an airborne Ebola? Like, where's the line?" Mm-hmm. And I, I was like, "Okay, like let's entertain, like let's talk about that because we're all very much opposed to the government lockdowns." But then and then we sort those things through. If if we all just agree with each other, our, your ideas aren't strengthened. Like you, you actually need someone to contradict, even if it's not always a good argument. But the other thing too is, uh, well, I, I guess that's it. It's simply put, right? Yeah. You, you need some kind of uh, challenge, but uh, I'll add one more thing to it. Some people comment, they're like, Ian doesn't know about this stuff. Why is he on the show? And it's like, that was always the, the reason why I asked Ian to be on the show. I was mm-hmm. like, we need someone who's going to be like, what is that? I don't know what that is. Yeah. So to give us an opportunity to explain it. Because when we started this show, I didn't. I, I I assumed most people would not have the deep political knowledge that we do, and and we don't know everything either. But the point was to have someone who's going to be like, "What do you mean Joe Biden did that?" Oh, let me explain. Because the assumption is if Ian, who's not overtly political, doesn't know, there's a lot of people at home who don't, and we want to make it more accessible. Yeah. But again, Ian and those semantic arguments. Ian, come on, buddy. Semantic arguments they don't go anywhere. <laughs> you we guys did, are both great. We did a, a live show and then, you know, we had like Ian was there, we were jamming and then someone asked something about Ian and, I was, and then I said, you know, Ian comes up with really great points a bunch of uh, often, we often disagree, but those semantic arguments and then everyone in the crowd started clapping and cheering <laughs> and then Ian was laughing. I probably disagree <laughs> with Ian about 99% of things. Yeah, yep. but everyone in the chat knows Ian rolls 20s. It happens. Yeah, he's pro death penalty and he's pro choice. Yeah, wild. And pro acid. <laughs> it's like a weird combination yeah. of things, you know, it's like wild. typically liberals, like I'm not saying Ian's a liberal, but liberals are like anti-death penalty pro-choice, mm. but Ian's pro-choice and pro-death penalty. At least he's <laughs> consistent there. Yeah, right. You know, you know it's yeah. <laughs> all right, man. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's see. Uh, Fair Frozen says the men are covered in hydraulic mud, a liquid prepared with soil, water and glycol and other aggregates used to inject into the drill it acts as a barrier between gas escaping from the well tap oh that's right i remember that Mm, interesting yeah yeah all right noah zork says are there non-farting rooms (laughs) we should set up a fart booth in the basement and it's just like if you have to fart you got to go in the booth that'd be hilarious and it's just got like a an air freshener like like fan going (laughs) We'll call it the fart booth. Most air fresheners are scams. Um, what? What does that mean? Do they give you cancer or something? They like mess up your uh, your endocrine, endocrine system. system. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that before. They, they, oh. They're horrible. I, every time I see it, just trash right away. Especially those little uh, those little trees. I think those are the ones. Especially they call like out. like Febreze and all these other stuff. Yeah. Horrible for you. Absolutely mm. destroys like uh, your, your physical body. Hmm. So what is this? Uh, Takfuchi uh, says Apple deleted all their tweets and pulled ads. Head of the App Store deleted their account. They might pull the Twitter app. This as Elon finally removes exploitation from the platform. Uh, hey, yup. Yeah. Mm. Did Apple really remove wow. all their tweets? Before Steve Jobs uh, died, I know that they... I know huh. that Apple was yeah, Apple's account's good empty. about preventing child exploitation on the apps on the App Store. Wow. But then ever since then, it's been less uh, enforced. Hmm. Hermes Bird says this guest sounds exactly like DeSantis. It's uncanny. <laughs> Do people tell you that, Darren? That you sound like Ron DeSantis? I I've never heard that before. Some, some of the, when, I, when I saw that, I was like, yeah, a little bit. Like I can hear something. Aren't you in Florida right now? Miami. Oh, uh, yeah. We're talking about it for the show. That's correct. I think they just mean I'm very tired. Ah, uh, yes. That <laughs> explains it. People are mentioning Balenciaga. Is that what it's called? Balenciaga. 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 There you go. There you go. Is it C or Chi? What? I think in Italian, the C is a Ch sound, right? It's not an Italian brand. It's, it was founded by a Spanish man and it's headquartered in France. Oh. oh. You learn so so it's, if it's French, then it's probably just B. <laughs> it's, not, it's not French, though. It's Spanish. Have you ever seen that viral video about 
the French language where it's like a ta 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 Yeah, because they were like all of these words are the same thing. It's like ta, ta, and they all mean something different. It's like okay, I guess it's just a tongue twister though. You know what I mean? Like we have those in English. We do. We have the same. Yeah. Reina uh, Rhino Bada says Bota. Bota, Bota is that what it says? Yeah, it's an Afrikaans name. Oh, there you go. He says, "Good morning from South Africa, where I always find your shows in my feed." Hey, hey that's cool. Interesting. What's up, Ugandet? Jason Lippert says, "I'm in Canada. Have no issues finding show." Do you need a tissue there? Do you, do you speak Do you speak uh, Afrikaans? On. I do to the most, but my parents will say I don't. But that's oh, really? <laughs> Yeah. What, what is it like, Dutch and English on them? It's basically Dutch. Yeah. Uh, it's like more like old Dutch because we didn't get uh, influence from like the Spanish taking over Holland and then, you know, creating the masculine feminine in Dutch now. But essentially really? it's like old Dutch. Yeah. Oh, wow. Little known. Well, how about that? All right. Nate B says, how do you know you aren't a stopping point, Tim? I think we are. I've I agree. talked about this too. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I've been saying for a while that the reason uh, YouTube probably tolerates us more than other shows is because they view us as a de-radicalization de force or something. Or, or, or the way I put it is YouTube wants to ban the right, but they know that if they do, the right will go somewhere else. So they need to allow certain channels to stay on the platform so that if they ban, so if they ban half of them, the users will stay. And then they force them into a into this particular ideological bubble. Mm. I've long talked about that. It's not going to change my opinions on things, I guess. But I will say this. Smash that like button. Subscribe to this channel. Share the show with your friends. Become a member at TimCast.com because we're going to talk about this creepy story with, uh, was it Balenciaga? Yeah, Balenciaga. Balenciaga. BDSM teddy bears in their new ad That's campaign and court with documents. children. And court documents pertaining to child exploitation. Yep. Really weird. We'll talk about that Ugh. over at TimCast.com. So become a member. We're going to start. We, we usually start recording right after we wrap and then we, we upload as soon as we're done. You can follow the show at TimCast IRL. You can follow me at TimCast. Uh, smash the like button. And Darren, do you want to shout anything out? Revolver.news. Check it out. Very, very hot tether piece. The next FTX, but bigger. A lot of people are talking about it. And so check it out. Are you on Twitter? I am on Twitter at Darren J. Beattie. You can find pictures of me on Instagram at Mary Archived. You can read my inane thoughts on Twitter also at Mary Archived. Um, and you can subscribe to Pop Culture Crisis on YouTube if you're interested in us talking about entertainment, celebrities, movies, etc. over there. Not, not political, but more fun. Mm -hmm. So go subscribe over there. When you when you super chat on Pop Culture Crisis, money guns fire money into the air. Yeah, so yeah. it doesn't phase me anymore. Like <laughs> I, I just barely even notice it, but it scares the guests a lot. That's cool. That's She's great. Shell shocked. <laughs> you'll, you'll be okay, Darren. I'll never be the same. This is awesome. Thank you so much for coming. I always Thank appreciate you. when you're on. Uh, my YouTube channel is youtube.com forward slash We Are Change. I'm getting absolutely screwed over there, but I do work very hard. I just got a new video out there about all the craziness in the world. Uh, we Are Change on YouTube, and uh, uh, Elon Musk is promising a video platform on Twitter. Uh, Luke, We Are Change at on Twitter. Totsiens, my Afrikaans mensen. And uh, I'm Serge.com. See you guys next time. We need a tissue first. We will see you all <laughs> over at TimCast.com. Thanks for hanging out. Cheers.